Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Hotfix, the weekly instalment of Oh Dear God. The camera has gone to utter shit. I might leave this in anyway, it'd be funny. So uh, you currently have the same number of pixels as I believe uh, maybe the an early Mario Is game? An early Mario? So basically I can just like just sit here and look like a cabbage and nobody will ever know. Not like I don't do that anyway, but... but I mean, it's, uh, you know, I say an early like Mario that. game. Actually, it's it's it. I think Mario had more pixels. I think Mario might have more pixels. What about if I do this pixels. and move around really quick? Is this like horrendously bad? No, because we're only receiving about one frame every 30 seconds. And, oh. uh, and it's, I mean, there's, there's not really words for it. There's not really words for it, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll send you a quick, I'll send you a quick screenshot because then we can have your reaction live and then I'll, uh, I'll switch <laughs> over to my reaction. <laughs> well, we'll get the sound <laughs> and get anything else <laughs> unless you count the mushed potato of your face as, as a reaction. But it's not even sending at me. It's it's like slowly sending at me, but it's like a fucking J. Oh Christ! Yeah, it's bad, ain't it? <laughs> what the hell? It's real bad. <laughs> we cannot continue it's so with gash, this. We, we, no, we we've got to find something different. Yeah, so, uh, it, oh. I'll stitch this in at the beginning, but we're going to stop now and then start again. So <laughs> enjoy this false start to hotfix. Cause nothing is met right. I've started it again, but I'm not even bothered to do an intro. You've already had the intro to Hotfix, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we're back in non-potato quality. Give it about oh, five Lord. minutes, though, and I'm sure it'll collapse completely into the floor again. This is Hotfix. This is our weekly video game discussion Which, podcast. Which, by the way, the, the fix to Skype is to just sign out and sign back in, apparently. What the yeah. fuck, Skype? Yeah, it works. Don't ask me why it works, but it worked for, like, five Disaster. minutes. It's driven me to drink. That's that's how bad it's got with Skype. You've always been a pisshead. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is funded by Patreons, patrons on patreon.com forward slash hotfix. Go there, and if you like the show, give us a dollar, and it keeps the show going. No. It'll be beautiful. You do it there, you can do it there. And if you do it now, then you get a shout out on the next show. Yeah, it'd well, be magnificent. Any, any time between this show and the next show, not like right now, because that would be that'd be hard to keep track of. Damn near impossible. Anyway. And if we could do that, it would be amazing, but we can't. Quality. What about a real time? As soon as the as soon as the pledge comes in, there's a video on the channel that's like you, except that would be ridiculous and impossible to enforce. So it's never going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go on to this topic because I'm just rambling. What now. a quality plan! <laughs> Amazing, ain't it? This is. I, I know you've all been excited about this. I know you especially been excited, son. Quantum Break. Quantum Break. That game that we all are looking forward oh to. Oh my god! Is, which... is this is this not the game which is like we've got a TV show and it's made by. Cabbage Spielberg, and it's going to be fucking great, and and, all, and that kind of shit. Is that what this is? Pretty much, Is that yeah. what that is? Yeah, yeah. I, I'd forgotten it existed until this news popped up uh, from Eurogamer, which was, no, Quantum Break won't launch on Steam. And then underneath, fans might not always agree with everything okay. we do, and I can imagine they're not going to agree with this at all. Quantum Break will not launch on Steam, Microsoft has confirmed, just via the Windows 10 store. The time manipulation mo shooter slash movie hybrid was originally announced as an Xbox exclusive, but was also <laughs> confirmed for pardon? PC last week. The what? Time manipulation what? shooter slash movie hybrid sounds terrible, <laughs> doesn't it? Isn't that what the order tried to be? A shooter slash movie hybrid? <laughs> no, that was cinematic, remember? Oh, sorry, that was, yeah, that no. Cinematic gaming experience. Quantum Break. Oh, I said that in a weird way. Quantum Break on Windows Quantum 10. Quantum Break! Quantum Break on Windows 10. Is a Windows Store exclusive, Xbox exec Aaron Greenberg explained via the latest Major Nelson podcast. It's not exactly a surprise Microsoft has kept Xbox games away from Steam. The upcoming Fable Legends is Windows 10 Store only too, although the Windows 10 Xbox app feature offers Steam DVR features. <laughs> it's All funny right, how that works. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got Windows 10, have you... I, Well, I'm going to answer this, but have you ever been on the Windows Store? I have had Windows 10. I've never... For like a year or whatever, since you could get it, I've never, ever, ever loaded up the Windows Store thing. Never. In fact, the first thing I did was get rid of all that shit out of my start menu. Yeah, I was just about to ask, how do you actually get onto Windows Store? Because genuinely, I got rid of all that stuff the second I installed it, and then I can't remember how to get there from now. I mean, I know you could search for it, but it's it's so far removed from all the stuff that I have readily available. I don't even. Oi, Cortana, where the fuck is the shop? <laughs> Have you got Cortana active? I haven't done anything with that. I just haven't bothered. Well, I've just clicked on it and tried to speak to it. It did nothing, so I guess not. 
<laughs> cool town is like, I'm afraid I do not understand your accent. Christ. I mean, the people are not happy about this, obviously. Um, uh, people have, I mean, some of this stuff is a well, bit no, stupid. Well, people are not happy. It, it came, it, when the news hit, and I, I seen it on Twitter, and some people were tweeting going, oh, God, Quantum Break's coming out on PC as well. I was like, oh, okay, because I'm at the point now where I don't give a shit about any of my consoles at all. I bought them, and it was just no. a waste of money. I, I can I can wholeheartedly say it was complete short-sightedness on my part to buy them, to buy the PS4 and to buy the fucking, especially the Xbox. The PS4 has had some decent exclusive, like Bloodborne. You know, that, that, okay, that was good fun. Was it 300 quid's worth of fun? No. The Xbox, though, I have literally never played. I, I've loaded games up on it and fucked around on them, but done nothing on them because all those games are available on PC. That's the biggest problem I've got. Yeah. All of these next gen games they're all on fucking pc so i don't care and they look it's, better it's like on pc before. anyway yeah why would i play them on There's shitty literally crappy no hardware reason to, to some play them on, FPS. on Xbox. you know what i've thought about doing because obviously i do a lot of my um my lot of time is spent in in the shack and i thought you know what maybe i'll take the xbox out of the shack and plug it in but then i'm like what would i do on it because i'll tell you what i'd do i'd be like why the fuck am i wasting time on the wanky xbox when i could be playing overwatch or something you know yeah. or, or doing something on pc Oh, it's such. A, oh, and at this point, oh. the argument that I, the argument that people have started that people still make is that oh well, you have a console because it's easier to use than than the PC. You know, there's not there's a, there's not much in the way of patches. You know, every bit of hardware is the same, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, except the PS4 and the Xbox One are basically just shit PCs at this point. They still have exactly the same problems. They still have all the that same issues. Is, yeah, they do. Games still crash. Is. The patches still have to be applied. You know, it, and things like storage know, and stuff. Know, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, but that argument is is too much. Like, um, that's from your point of view and and everybody's point of view listening to this podcast because we understand how to use computers. There yeah. are people out there who don't even know how to fucking turn a computer off. Yeah, true. but they know how to press a button to turn on an Xbox. I've met these people, and it's frightening to meet them in real life. But you do meet them. Yeah, and it's like, really, how can these people exist? But there's loads of them out there. A lot of like. Um, lads and people like that they play on games consoles because they just pop the game in and off they go in fact they're probably a bit pissed that the new generation consoles are a bit more computery like you know the way they, they operate yeah, with all their yeah. interfaces and stuff so i don't know but yeah it, it, this quantum break thing is it's it this is i mean christ ubisoft used to put you it came up with their fucking crap didn't they their i forgot what it's Deep really play. called whatever it is that's it great yeah. name came out with that <laughs> And they put their games exclusively on it for a while, didn't they? But they still sell their games on Steam. Their games yeah. are available on Steam and Uplay. Why? Well, because it's fucking massive Steam. EA are the only company that apparently don't think they need Steam. And that's fine. They still do sell some games on Steam, I think, like older Mass Effect games and stuff like that. I think Dragon Age is on Steam as well. Yeah. Um, however, Origin is not too bad as a platform. It's very expensive. It's a damn sight better um, than you play, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think Star Wars Battlefront, if that was available on Steam and Origin, probably would have done a hell of a lot better than it has yeah. done just on Origin. More people would buy it. Same goes for any game. Windows are so... And, and Microsoft, are, they're like in a different world. I mean, we think Valve are big, and they're not. Microsoft are like insanely big they're like apple levels of worth it's like yeah we've got so much money and we're so richer than everybody else and we've got this massive thing we want our own thing and they don't care about taking a hit you know they don't, i mean their, their entire their entire philosophy with the xbox was completely stupid um from the beginning wasn't it where it was this yeah. oh it's a dvr it's this big thing it integrates with your cable television it becomes your your you know your your, your planner and whatever to watch all of your cable crap only in the US, though. Um, so everybody's like, what? I mean, this country that we live in, the good old UK, was an Xbox stronghold. Yeah. So were some countries in Europe, but Europe was still always kind of playstation -y. As soon as that shit came out, this country adopted the PS4 and just... I mean, it, there's still a decent following for Xbox, don't get me wrong, but PS4 is, has annihilated the, oh, yeah, the Xbox in every it. region. It's, it's insane, the, the turnover. Xbox because yeah, I mean, Xbox does okay in the US, but, you know, they, they Microsoft are a company that can make these shit decisions and it kind of doesn't matter. You know, they you can imagine them sitting in a board going, oh, yeah, well, if we do this, we could be the next generation of television. We could control television. Yeah, oh, it's worth yeah. a gamble. It's only worth a few billion or whatever. They don't care. I mean, they must care. They obviously want profits. I mean, look at them with the, you know, the Windows phones and all of that shit. 
some of those now are actually pretty good, but nobody cares because it's like a Windows phone. Well, no, it's a no, Windows phone. Yeah, that's like the worst. That's the platform. thing as well that nobody cares because people tr- were, were sucked in the first time. They're like, oh, I'm going to try the yeah, Windows yeah. phone. I bought one. I had the. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's so bad. I can't remember what it was called. Was it? No, it wasn't the Lumia because it was way older than that. It was a lot older than no, that. No, yeah, it was It was a Nokia, though, wasn't it, was, it? Yeah, it was a Nokia. I just can't remember what model it was. But I got one because I was like, well, my PC is Windows. I do all my stuff on PC. I've got an Android tablet, but I don't really care about Android. It's just that's what the tablet came with. I don't really give a shit about anything on Android. Windows phone would be great. Absolutely not. It was it was just crap. Like, there was no customization options, so it looked crap. The it's Metro UI Minimal was functionality, that's yeah, the problem yeah. with them, isn't it? But that, that means that... People have said to me that the latest generation of Windows phones are actually pretty good, but I'm just going, no, I'm not going to try that because I've had an Android phone since then, and the Android phones have been really, really good, so I've got no incentive you know, to go the, back and the try best something thing, that didn't work before. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, the best thing that came out of Microsoft recently was the uh, Surface line of tablets. They are seen as very good tablets because yeah. all they are is Windows 10, but the desktop version in a tablet, and they're dead powerful. And they make things like the Apple iPad Pro thing look stupid because yeah. they're way faster. They've got better specs and they're, they're well, they're cheap, which is funny. Yeah. I mean, they're still expensive. But yeah, this is a strange decision. This is very much a decision of like, ah, yes, why would we help our competitors? No, no, no. Gaming on Windows PC will be done through our store. And it's like, boys, you know you know who, how many installs you've got. You probably know what people have got installed on the computer. You know that anybody playing games has got Steam installed. Why haven't you just put it on Steam? You know, uh, but then again, the, the money they'd make off Steam is probably fucking nothing to them anyway. Like yeah. I said, I, it's just a stupid, annoying I, situation for gamers. It pisses gamers off because you can't. I'm not going to fucking go to the Windows Store and buy this shit. No. It'll be fifty quid. It'll I'm be not, fifty quid as well. I'm not. I, I have. There's no compulsion to go to Windows Store for a single game. That's not how it works. And when you look at previous, like previous titles that had Windows integration, like in the form of games for Windows Live, like look at Dawn of War Two. That was Games for Windows Live. Games for Windows Live was a pile of shit. It made Dawn of War 2, like, worse just by being attached to it because it was so awkward to use. And it yeah. was buggy and it was crappy and it was slow and no one liked it. That being said, see, this, I'm in kind of, I'm in two minds with this. I, I'm not going to the Windows 10 store. I'm not interested in it. Quantum Break is not something that I'm going to, like, switch platforms I didn't for. care. I didn't care about it anyway. I mean... Quantum Break. Okay, I've got a, I've got an Xbox, right? So, if if I got Quantum Break, I mean, I, I doubt I will get Quantum Break. Uh, it'd have to be magically just sent to me by some PR agency because it's not something I'm going to go out and buy. Um, yeah, I don't care. It's, it's like it would be nice if it was on Steam. Then maybe I would have poked around and tried to get some sort of a you know a code sent to me or something to have a look at it. Yeah. But I I, I don't. Yeah. You see, the, the, that's the thing. I. I don't care about Windows 10. I don't care about Quantum Break. I'd imagine at this point, a lot of people don't really care about Fable Legends either. <laughs> Just because, let's face it, Fable's not had the best track record for, you know, doing what they said they'd do. Um, yeah, you know, who given, cares? Given the, lad who, <laughs> given the lad who headed that project for God knows how many years. <laughs> but on the other hand, on the other hand, Steam, Steam's, Steam's all I found right. the store. I'm going on the store while you ran. <laughs> Steam's okay. Find some games. They've got a good refund policy. I like the Steam refund policy. That's fantastic. However, that, honestly, at this point, that is pretty much the only thing, personally, that I like about Steam, other than the fact there's plenty of games on it. It's got loads of games, got a decent refund policy. The green light system is utter shit and needs to be got rid of. It is not like a community vetting process. It's just, it is just like a hive of stolen assets, ripped off games outright copyright infringements like minecraft clones and shit all over the place which is abused like to hell and back in an attempt to get stuff made so that it can be sold because they didn't spend any effort on it they just ripped off a unity asset pack and made a game and then they sell it on steam because it got greenlit that's a terrible system the review system is okay but not that many people actually use it seriously and there's no real moderation for that i mean when you look at steam the biggest problems are things like moderation there's no moderation for quality control so you end up with broken shit games on it there's no moderation for green light because the community's supposed to do that but the community i mean let's be honest 
get enough people together in a big room and you will discover that a significant number of them are fucking idiots, which is why Greenlight gets rammed with constant rip-offs of other games yeah. and with with Unity Asset rips. That's that's because people keep voting for it and keep saying yes. That's how bloody, what they call, digital homicide, Jim Sterling's lot. I say Jim Sterling's lot. The lot he keeps having a fight with. It's not really fair to give him responsibility for them. Um, that's how they keep going because they keep getting shit pushed through green light and stuff. And it's like, well, why are they doing getting that? Getting the shit pushed through. <laughs> oh, because yeah, yeah, there's yeah, a bunch right, of yeah, yeah. morons voting for them. When you actually look at Steam as a whole, oh, and the customer service, let's not forget that, or the complete lack of, where they've said repeatedly, yeah, we want to get better with customer service. Yes, we want to do more with customer service. What's actually happened with customer service? Absolutely nothing. What they've done is they've implemented the Steam refund system, which is, I think it's pretty much automated, as far as I know. I could be wrong on that, but you get such a quick response, and they must have so many things through it. You have to kind of assume that it's automated, because if they had that many staff willing to look at that many refund requests every day, you'd think they'd be able to get back to you via, you know, regarding your stolen account in quicker than maybe a month, which some people have their accounts stolen and they never hear from them again. It's like, I've contacted oh. Steam Customer Service, but they haven't done anything <laughs> because they don't have any staff. They've got one guy looking at all the tickets going, I don't know what to do. There's a million requests. I'm only one man. It is- I've, opened up a, I've opened up a whole can of worms here. I'm on the fucking game store on Windows Store. Oh, and no. it, it, it's like... It, it's it's just it's a mobile game shop it's basically mm. what and like the the google play store is but like an absolutely shit version of it and it's got some of the most popular mobile games like candy crush and whatever on it it's obviously got mine uh craft on it it's got minesweeper on it i guess it's not installed on the computer anymore yeah but it's got um in-app purchases and one of them is one year expiration and it's seven pounds 69 <laughs> i don't know what that means a one mean month you've only got expiration for a year to that game like a game activate your game i don't know it it says activate your game for free and then it says one month expiration which would it sounds like one month subscription don't it for one pound 19 or seven pound 69 for the year what that seems a bit dodgy these are xbox games i think these are linked into the xbox uh live account as well yeah because you have like a lot a microsoft account i think you can share everything between but See, this just is the thing. garbage. Like, oh, they've Steam... got t- Rise of the Tomb Raiders on here. Yeah. What well, Rise of the Tomb Raiders on Steam? So how, why would you? How much is it on Steam? I guess it's the same price. Let's find out. Yeah, it would probably be full price on Steam, surely. Yeah, I'd have thought so. I thought I saw it today, but I might have made that up. No. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, forty quid. Yeah, it's the same price. It's thirty nine ninety nine. But yeah. I mean, that's that's the only. Well, I mean, the top game on this store is Minecraft, Windows 10 edition. It's not really surprising. This must be this must be how you play Minecraft these days. You buy yeah. it through the store because obviously they bought it. Uh, then you've got Plaguing, <laughs> which is like you know whatever. Grand Theft Auto is San Andreas, <laughs> right? Lara Croft Go. They just like the mobile conversions of them. Draw so, epic that's... stick men. You know, it's just crap. Fruit that's, Ninja. That's Temple genuinely Run, disappointing shit. because. Steam's all right, but Steam has got a bit of a monopoly. They've got all the games and they've got all the customer base. And I don't like Windows. I don't like Windows 10 Store from what you've described of it there. To be honest, I'm utterly ignorant of it apart from that because why the fuck would you ever go there? You know, back to the original point, why would you even bother? Yeah. But on the other hand, competition is good. Competition is always good. Like, we bet, I, I, I hold my hands up. I bitched about Origin. I bitched about Origin when EA launched that. I was like, for fuck's sake, another platform. For ca- we don't care. No one likes games for Windows 10. Why the fuck are you launching Origin? No one gives a shit. Just leave it alone. Except Origin had a decent refunds policy and has got decent customer support. They are doing better than Steam in terms of customer support by far. I emailed with a problem with my account and within two hours, it had been fixed. I accidentally bought, well, I say I actually bought two things twice. I bought a Command & Conquer game and then found it was in the bundle with all the other Command & Conquer games. And I emailed and I said, I, I bought this um, and I've tried to refund it. It says it can't. Can you give me a hand? Yeah, no problem. Sorted it. Someone replied to me, an actual person. It wasn't even an automated ticket I got back. It was an actual person asking for specifics of which order I'd bought them in and what I'd done. And then I log into my Origin account and it's fixed. Steam, you would never get that. So the competition no, no. side of things, I, I want to say that this isn't a bad thing because it's like 
promoting competition amongst all these different platforms is obviously good because it's only through competition, it's only through losing customers to another platform that a company decides to do something about their platform. That's just how it works. If it if people are just going to hit stick there and accept it and go, oh, well, there's nothing better, then they won't make it better themselves because they'll just be like, well, fuck it, we've already got all these customers, who cares? So on the up, on one hand, it's like, okay, Quantum Break being on Windows 10 store, that's not too bad because it might get people using something other than Steam. On the other hand, why limit it to just one store? I mean, why not make it so that yeah, you have to activate activate it through Windows the 10 stores? Competition store or argument. It, it is crap in this example because it has the only other game it's got is Tomb Raider. This isn't like a comp. It yeah, isn't like it's, a store it's not where actually you can go a competition, and get all the games is it? from. It's like no, it's, it's just like pointless. You have it would be like it. It would be very similar to like. Um, quantum break if it wasn't a you know a, a microsoft game just saying no you can only buy the game off our website yeah like, what yeah yeah no, it, it'd be something weird like that i don't know it's just weird it's just weird it's just typical big company wants to have its own shit and doesn't want to use any other company's crap no. so it's not on steam i tell you what, people though, that I, lose are us yeah i i bet it severely wrecks it for sales on pc it will crush it for sales because it <laughs> your average as i say most people didn't want origin people didn't want you play they just wanted steam and yeah. this is not origin or you play because you can't get any fucking games on it so well it's just shit you say, apparently you have like, to pay seven pound for minesweeper fuck that shit you could <laughs> buy minecraft for that <laughs> why are you even gonna yeah why are you even gonna go there you might go there you might get some hardcore nutter going i've been waiting for quantum break all my life i can't wait i want it Therefore, I will have to go to the Windows 10, to, 10, Windows 10, Windows 10 store and just deal with it. But he ain't going to go back, is he? He's not going to be like, well, this is a fantastic customer experience. I've bought the one game I was interested in from your store. Let me look at the rest. Oh, no, wait, there are no other games on there, so I don't give a shit. It's just, <laughs> no one's going to bother, are they? No one's going to bother. It's, no, no. it's bizarre. It's like, it's, it's as you say, it's, we want our own platform. Great, but you need to have something else on your platform besides one thing. You cannot push an alternative to Steam, an alternative to Origin and Uplay, with your only offerings being Minecraft, Tomb Raider, and Quantum Break, and a million mobile games and Minesweeper. That's not going to work. People aren't going to accept that. They're just like, you store shit, mate. And then they're going to leave. And, that, and that'll <laughs> be it. It's right, though. Yeah, it's right, though. It's right. It's crazy. God damn. I'll tell you what. Let's go on to, uh, let's go on to Capcom. The Street Fighter V launched except it didn't work very well <laughs> so <laughs> capcom released street fighter 5 on both playstation 4 and windows pc yesterday a launch accompanied by various server and other you know i've only just thought about this it's a really weird combination that isn't it capcom released street fighter 5 on both playstation 4 and windows pc yesterday no xbox one version yeah um it is but well, I know that is kind of weird, yeah. I was going to say it's because they're Japanese and they don't care. They just play on PlayStations. But why PC then? Yeah. <laughs> if anyway, they PC, they must have an... Um... <laughs> yeah. Um, a launch accompanied by various server and other issues that the company says it's currently addressing. In a post to its Capcom Unity blog, the developer updated Street Fighter players on the status of a variety of problems experienced in both versions. Online connectivity issues on both PS4 and PC editions of the new Street Fighter should be less frequent now that the game was launched across all regions, according to Capcom's update. The company also claims to have resolved problems with matchmaking, which were caused by a server error. PC users <laughs> yeah. experiencing oh. crashes or problems with booting up Street Fighter V are advised to check their antivirus software setting, Capcom said. These issues could be caused by programs rejecting the executable file. The company recommended that PC players dealing with frequent crashes add the game to their antivirus exclusion list. There's also a fix in the works for fighter IDs becoming corrupted on the PC version of the game. So, the problem with this is, firstly, when a company says, oh, check your antivirus, that's code for we don't know what's going wrong. And we need to say something in case people get upset with us because it's not. It's I swear to God, for as long as I've been gaming on PC, there's always been like at least once or twice a year a game that comes out and it doesn't work properly, and someone goes, "Oh, it's a problem with your. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a problem with your antivirus. That is, or it's well, it's the. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a. It, it, you know, it clashes with the. Uh, with it's just code for we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we, we, we got no yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
That that antivirus thing always makes me laugh. Like you'll see people with like, oh god, I, I, my computer's blue screen and blah blah blah, and it's like, oh, uh, not an antivirus. Um, um, and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like Christ <laughs> alive! If you if computer blue screens, it comes up with a code, and you can type the code into Google, and Google yeah, will tell you Google, what the fucking code means. Google is the right? fountain of all knowledge. Just take just take a picture of the screen if you can't remember. The thing. I mean, everyone's got a smartphone these days. How the to camera. fuck did we? Just, no, you just talk to it. You just get your phone and go, oi, dickhead, what's wrong with my computer? Just okay, like, Google, how do we even and then exist <laughs> read it without out. this shit. Like, uh, the amount of shit, like, I mean, recently, right? Um, but you'll notice, I don't have my bike behind me anymore because I fixed it finally. But you won't understand what I'm going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, it, 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 un- unless you know about <laughs> mountain bikes. But the bottom bracket is BB30. That means it's press fit. That means the two bottom brackets with the bearings, what the crank goes in, you know, so the spin round, they get smashed in, right? And that's how the frame's designed. They are crap in wet conditions. They're all right in dry climates, but obviously we live in a swamp, so that's no good. So <laughs> I got to get this out and put a Holotech one in, of which I did. Problem is, the Holotech one is the wrong size. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I had to buy a BB30 bottom bracket converter and put this in. I had to work out how to put it in, even to find the converter and all this shit. It's all Google. Without Google, I'd have been screwed. I've been going to a shop and be going, mate, I don't know what's wrong with my bike, and hopefully just trusting them. And that is something which I find very hard to do these days. Like the only the only time this ever going to happen to me is is cars would be taking the car into a garage and I'd be like, I don't know what's wrong with the car. Can you fix it? And I even then, just, like rel- I, I always think I'm getting ripped off. Yeah, and even then, I now I've got massive trust issues with cars. After I think we told this story on the podcast. Yeah, once. we did about the yeah, yeah. about the car, when I, yeah. when I when I have, when I had your car and I took it to the garage and. The, they basically talk shit in an attempt to extort money out of me to repair things that weren't yeah, yeah, yeah. that weren't wrong with it. Like, I, the problem is, no, though, the internet's, it's like, it, fucking well, the internet's wanna... good, but sometimes it gets a bit pissy. Like when I was looking for <laughs> my bike originally, they were like, "Oh no, you need this, you need that," and everyone's recommending all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah, and it just gets yeah. out of hand. I mean, we've spoke about it before with like you and the guitar amps and whatever. Yeah, it, but, yeah. it gets crazy. It's like this kind of thing. I, hang on, am I surprised that this was a capitulation on launch? Not really, because I think it's been rushed out. Uh, Street Fighter. Well, I th- I didn't think Street Fighter Four had been out for that long, to be honest. I... Uh, it's been out for a couple of years, hasn't it? A couple that? of years. Uh, I might be getting yeah. confused with Mortal Kombat. It could be because I. But the thing is, with stuff like this now, I'm I'm rapidly reaching the point where I'm finding it less and less easy to understand. Trying to rush this shit out and just tell people, oh no, we'll fix it after the fact. We're we're past that point now. We can't do that anymore. Yeah. We've we've we've. Well, we've we've just passed it, and in fact, actually, I haven't. I should have listed this down. We can talk about it anyway. We'll talk about it just after this because it's a good segue into it. But the catalyst for this, I swear to God, I'm putting this down as the catalyst for it was was Unity, Assassin's Creed Unity, when that all went to shit, when it all capitulated, when it all collapsed. That was the point where it was like publishers started to kind of seem to take notice, and then the Steam refunds came in. I think that was shortly after Unity. And then we had Batman Arkham Knight. It was like, those are the two games that I'm kind of attributing the, almost like the uprising of players, where players stopped going, oh, let's just launch day issues, this happens all the time, and started going, no, this is bullshit, we're not having it. And then Steam facilitated that with the Steam refund system, and so then Arkham Knight came out, and that was just a nightmare on PC, and it still is, which is utterly insane. Um, and of course, it was a it was a casualty of Steam refunds. It, it literally it, was. It got beat to shit. People were re- refunding it left, right, and centre. And then it came out again. It wasn't fixed, and so no one bought it. It's like for a company still to go just rush it out, just rush it out. We'll fix it when it's out. We'll fix it when it's out. You can't do that anymore. It doesn't work like that anymore. Luckily, we've we've progressed past the point where we are no longer having to say why the hell is this game broken on launch because you can actually you can always map this through videos we've done which sounds daft but when you go back to like the very first hot fixes and like the very first game shows when we used to do that a lot of the time we would talk about games being broken on launch and how it was totally shit and how people seemed to accept it and we couldn't understand why and then as it as it goes as you, as you kind of go through it's like oh this is totally shit and then people started to get a bit weary of it they were just like oh, okay well I guess it's launch day. What else do you expect? Oh, well, I guess it's this type of game. What else do you expect? This always happens with this series. Oh, well, I guess yeah. it's just the way things are. And then uh, it's almost like we reached a breaking point where everyone kind of went, this is the way things are, and it's totally shit, and we're sick of it now, and we're not having it anymore. And then, but now we've still got this. We've still got, like, we still have companies that think that it's better to rush a product out unfinished and then fix the issues afterwards and hope that the players don't get too pissed. 
and refund it and get rid of it and tell them to piss off. But, but I mean, the craziest thing is it's it's integral to the game, the multiplayer of this. Because yeah. like, what the fuck do you do? Okay, you, you can play the single player, right? But you want the fucking multiplayer. That's how you get better at the fight. I mean, it's mm. a fucking beatable game, right? Jesus. Yeah. Where? Why Why would you... No, I, who I, who the hell would play a Street Fighter game against the AI and nothing else? Who would do that? That's not what it's for. That's not <laughs> what the game's designed around. There's no... That's literally not what it was built for. So to release it with like, oh, well, we've got... I know you're having trouble finding games and it crashes all the time, but it's fine. We're going to fix it. No. No, that is the purpose of your game. Your game is it's essentially a PvP game, but the PvP element's broken. What the fuck is that? And then they're going, oh, we'll fix it. I don't I don't understand how that is still a thing, like how companies still think that's a good idea. Just take the extra time. Take the extra time to fix it. People might bitch, and people do bitch. People bitch all the time, where people say, oh, it's delayed. Sorry, the game's been delayed. I mean, look at the division. The division's getting delayed left, right, and center as well. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, admittedly, it doesn't look very good at the moment, but that's not down to a technical problem. That's just down to people wearing hoodies that are impervious to bullets it's got nothing to do with the actual nuts and bolts of the game i suppose we can lead into that game now i guess christ there's something about the division (laughs) god so the the uh the division's dlc i'll switch over oh christ hang on a minute i'm getting spammed to oblivion with youtube comments on that video i made just saying the division's boring where i'm just like it's boring and you know whatever and i've got all the you know the haters oh my god mate it's in beta how can you judge a game in beta but that's not I'm talking about the game. You can't change yeah. the game. You know, I'm not talking about little yeah. bits and pieces in it. It, it, it makes me sad, Mr. The, ba- the really baseline book. mechanics of the game are boring. <laughs> You're not going to change that in beta. That's not going to change in beta. That's not going to alter. They're not going to go, well, people say it's boring, but we'll just switch it all up. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's not what happens, especially with companies like Ubisoft and EA and whatever. Betas aren't really betas anymore. Even closed betas aren't really betas. They're, they're more sort of, I want to say they're more marketing, but in a way, I guess that's not really correct either. It's like a weird mix between the two, ain't it? Because to say that for that yeah. for like that kind of company, it's like beaters aren't really beaters. That would be to do a disservice to the companies that do make big sweeping changes during the beaters, which there are plenty well, of. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. But it's not, it's not, it, that's not really the issue I had with the, the game. I mean, it, the division is... All right, so I spoke to a guy who is an... I won't name him, but he's a, a, an avid PC gamer and he plays a lot of hardcore games, I'd say. Um, he played The Division and was like, it's actually pretty good. Um, I don't know why you said it was shit. And I'm like, well, I said it's shit because I think there's much better <laughs> ways to spend my time. He actually brought up the point of like, well, you've actually played Destiny though, haven't you? And had that kind of FPS sort of loot experience anyway. And I was on console and the FPS was shit. But it was a much more, as hilarious as this sound, fleshed out experience. But the problem <laughs> yeah. is, the division was in beta, you know, so it did, it was content restricted. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the division is pretty much just a brainless go in and shoot, get the loot, come out, go in and shoot, get the loot style of thing. And I, that doesn't really appeal to me. I think, again, it goes back to the topic we spoke about last week where you get older and I think certain types of games sort of changed like i've had my fill of that style of game so yeah. even though originally i wanted that before i played the beta and realized how fucking boring it was sure somebody could implement it different and it would be maybe more interesting to me to play i don't know but um that game is going to rely on a shitload of pve content to keep people playing it needs raids it needs long dungeons it needs things like that what it's currently got is just little well i know it's the beta and i know okay it doesn't have all the content it's just like a little pissy mission which lasts like five minutes and then you yeah. just keep doing it again and again and it, I... I have to admit i watched but anyway watched what's a... the dlc deal well i, I just oh, to say on, i watched a, i watched a couple of other videos on on the division which uh it, i mean there was no critique from the two channels whatsoever because they were achievement hunter and funhouse so you know i'm not going to take bluntly i'm not going to take anything achievement hunter say about games seriously because they are a i only play it i don't critique it channel so it's just done for the for the hell of doing it but it was really interesting watching the two different videos that they in funhouse did because uh i watched the funhouse one first and in in the division they found it boring like they they were yeah, not yeah, having yeah. fun with it 
Then they went to the dark zone. It's, it's, called, it's called the dark zone, yeah. ain't it? Where it's like the PvP yeah, area. Yeah, it's just the PvP area where you get the best loot from, but you have to yeah. level up in the PvE to get to the dark yeah. zone. But the dark zone is not for everybody, though, because that isn't like a well, PvE raid. This it's is like a shit show. This is why I found it interesting and kind of funny, because Funhouse went in, and they were like, oh, we've got loot. Oh, this is great. I found some loot. Oh, you have to extract the loot. Okay. And then people started attacking them. And they were like, oh, shit. Run. Hide. We've got to hide. We've got to get away. We've got to run away. Yeah. And so they kept running away, and then they kept trying to get the loot, and then they kept running away. And they were getting pissy, and they were getting pissed off, because it was like, oh, we keep getting killed, this is bullshit, oh, we can't get any loot, how the fuck is this? Achievement Hunter goes into exactly the same zone. They go into exactly the same place, and they're like, and it's, that's a dude, yeah. murder him. And they just go around just killing the shit out of people until they get like a, what is it, like a wanted level type thing. I can't remember exactly what yeah, it's yeah. called, but they're, like, they're hunted or something, or they're renegade or something like that. Um, and so... They are then at the point where... You basically got, like, get, like, PK flagged, and then you can be killed in turn yeah, by yeah. players can kill you, and they don't get... And they were, like, all at the highest level of that. And so then people were forming up parties and going after them, and it was turning into, like, group-on-group group play, where it was like, these guys are... These well, guys let me just come in innocence. there. Let's go after them. I'm getting comments on my YouTube video, I presume from people who have watched those type of videos, because a lot of people have watched them, and they're thinking, this is great, what is this guy moaning about? You know, this guy's just a yeah, dickhead, and but- he's moaning about the game. There, there are ways it's of a playing mindset games thing, making it. It's it's it is, but there's ways of playing games, even when the games are totally shit to, and makes the games look great. Look at the, the shit we've played in the past, and it looked great because me and you were dicking around on it, yeah, taking the piss. It depends how you get your enjoyment out of a game. If you want to look at a game as like a technical thing and be like, well, this is fucking boring, but if you want to look at a game as like, how can we actually have fun with this thing and yeah. really take the piss out of it? Two different types of videos get made there on a game. Yeah, yeah, and and the, I think you know the thing with me looking at the division is that I think unless I did the achievement hunter route, which is just go around shooting the shit out of everybody for the sheer hell of it, I'd be bored of it because it doesn't look interesting. Like the PVE element looks really shit. It looks really dull. It looks really annoying. If I was the type of person who only wanted that side of things, but I had to go into the dark zone to get the best loot, but of course it's PVP and people kept killing me, I'd be like, well, this is. This is just shit. Oh, this isn't a good game. This is boring. This is not interesting. It ain't fun. I just keep getting killed over and over again. What's the point? Whereas, if you're going to go in and go, I'm going to find someone, I'm going to fucking murk them over and over again. That yeah. could be the best game of the year for you. Well, when, me, when, when we played Conan the Barbarian, the Conan MMO, we were just running around killing people. The game was a bag of shit. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was dead really funny was. to us because there was three of us standing outside the noob area. People would load in. <laughs> Right, they'd load into the zone, and obviously they were still loading, but we just cut their head off, and then yep. they'd load in, they'd be dead. And yep. then we just keep doing it. Because you know, it had really shit physics, remember? And the head would roll away, and it was yeah, just funny. Yeah. But yeah. That, that, would, that is the type of mentality of, wow, this is so good. And then people would watch the video and be like, oh, this game's amazing, you can butcher people, but actually it's the worst thing you've ever played in your life. Well, I mean, look at stuff like, let's be honest, let's look at like Mountain Blade. I know it's got its staunch uh, defenders. It, I know. gone a minute. No, like the, gone a minute. The multiplayer None. element of it, I... I it's know the multiplayer it's, element, yeah. Yeah, the multiplayer That's element. That's shit. The, like, I, know, I know the single player is, it, you know, people swear Beautiful. by it. But the multiplayer, it, it's really not that great. It It's not built no, that it's well. Totally it doesn't shit. work that well. It's, it's like, totally shit, yeah. But playing it with a group of people is dead funny. It's fun. It's But this is the thing. There's a difference between good and fun. I think you can have fun in a really shit game. Just as much as you can have fun in a good game. But the thing is, you're not going to go back to the shit game and go, that was one of the best things I've ever played. Instead, you're going to go, that was funny. And like, there's, there's, a, there's a distinct difference between the two. When I'm looking at The Division, I can't actually really see myself thinking either of those things, which is a big problem. Yeah. Because I look at it and I don't think it looks good. And I also don't think it looks particularly funny either. Because surely just shooting people at the entrance of the dark zone is going to get old after a while. And if that's all you're playing the game for, then, well, you're not going to have much to do. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's But, yeah, what was the original? That was it. The original actual story for The Division is the fact that the DLC is going to be on Xbox One first. So the the DLC will make its way to PlayStation 4 and Windows 30 days after it arrives on Xbox One. So you still get it, but you get it a month later, which I know it's a paid thing. I know they've been paid to do it. Yeah, yeah, timed exclusive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, it's it's the only way they can like. I mean, it, it, 
I seriously doubt whether this actually drives sales to a console because you, I mean, okay, there will be people who are sitting there like, okay, I want the division. And they're like, when do I get the DLC first? Ah, I get it if I buy an Xbox. So I'm going to buy an Xbox. I don't think there will, okay, there'll be a small minority of people like that. But I think a lot of people generally buy the console their friends have got if they're buying consoles. And PS4 is pretty big right now. So a lot of people are going to buy PS4 if they yeah. really wanted to play the division. These type of things seem a bit silly to me. It seems like, hi, we're Microsoft. We'll give you some money if we get the thing first. And the company just weighs up if actually receiving that money is going to offset the cost of not launching on both platforms simultaneously and then can be recovered or actually exceeded when they do launch on the other platform a month later. It's just yeah. it's just shit. I mean, imagine if, if like, um, you had that on PC. Imagine if, like, if you had like i don't even know how you would do it different operating systems maybe if you were using windows 8 or something you don't get this but you kind of do get that because of direct x12 it's only available on windows 10 yeah um but even so it, it, that's not a very good example but yeah I, it's just stupid i don't it's i'm glad that that is console crap and we don't have to deal with it a graphics card specific will be i would be like okay nvidia cards get the game a month before ati cards even get a fucking driver to run the game which yeah. generally happens anyway yeah well i'll tell you what we're gonna we're gonna move on to something that i actually was gonna mention before the division but then it, it, it all just kind of got away from us so i mean this is just something i found very quickly on GameSpot. we don't particularly need to see it but it's it's just so that you know i'm not just making it up there's not going to be a new assassin's creed since you know because we're oh yeah, yeah. And, yeah you know yeah. people refunding orders and so on there is not going to be an Assassin's Creed in 2016. Um, now, they have also said that this will benefit the film because, you know, the film is coming out in 2016. Oh, um, hell. Which, see, uh, the film, I'm just like, I'm not sure I care, but it could be okay. It looks better than World of Warcraft. You know not what? World of Warcraft, think... Warcraft, <laughs> which is not difficult yeah. because Warcraft looks you know weird <laughs> as hell. But... I know, but I still watch Warcraft over that, you know. And I think, I think, that fast bender needs a slap because of what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> he's like, right then, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get in the bloody uh, what the hell was it? The the the, the British director guy's Jobs film, Steve Jobs film thing, oh, which actually yeah. I'd kind of like to see, but it bombed because no fucker wanted to see it because there's been about thirty <laughs> before. So people are like, well, that's shit. We're not watching it. No, and then he's like, like oh, by the way, <laughs> by the way, I'm now fucking Captain Assassin or whatever the guy's called. <laughs> And I'm going to run around like, and I mean, I oh, Jesus fucking Christ. They must have paid him a lot of money. It's like um, the guy from Meet the Fockers. What's he called? The old guy. Oh, uh, um, shit. De Niro. Yeah, yeah, Robert De Niro. Yeah. It was a quality actor, but now he just don't care and takes every shit job going. And he's just in all the worst films ever. Just, it's like, fuck it. I'm just going to get a payday. Maybe that's what's going on there. Mr. Kirioff, though, it is beautiful that finally Ubisoft have gone, Assassin's Creed is shit. Therefore, let's not it's, make an it's Assassin's not Creed worked. game. It's gone bad. The no. fact that they've well, that's that not is... fair. Hang on, that's not fair. Me to call it shit. The last one, Victory, actually had decent reviews and looked pretty nice from what I saw. The problem is the damage was done before Victory, and I know yeah. Victory was still. Is it was? Is it called Victory, or was that the code name for it? The, yeah, the code name was Victory, and it was shit. I should know this. <laughs> I can't remember what it was called. Syndicate. Syndicate that's it. Was yes. Yes. Yeah. So it should have been called Victory. That sounded better. Um, Syndicate. The damage was already done, but the game has obviously been in production for like three years before because it's fucking Ubisoft and they've got a billion studios working on these things. Yeah. It comes out and it, it must have done not very good. I mean, the previous games must have done better than that, even though this was actually a better game than those. Um, the damage was done by the old face missing. Everybody remembers that Unity disaster yep. show. Which is still... Three was which bad, is, it's still but then the four was okay. Use. It's I, I, still I know, I know, I know. But three was bad. And it's almost like they realized three was bad and then four came out and that was actually pretty good and it had the whole boat yeah, thing yeah. and all that stuff. And then it just went to shit again. They do need to take a step back and it's what they said they're doing, isn't it? We're taking a step back. Yeah. We're going to reevaluate and we'll be back in 2017 or something to say. Yeah. Or we're going to yeah. look at that, which is the right thing to do because that is, it, we talk about um, fatigue and, and I mean, you made a video on it with the get burnt out on games yeah. idea. And it's totally true. Call of Duty suffers from it although not as bad. FIFA suffers from it, although like not as bad. Ubisoft, though, with Assassin's Creed, are really suffering with it. Like, really, really. I mean, in fact, yeah. FIFA isn't suffering from it. 
it just sells the same every year. And Call of Duty is and there's nothing you can do different, is there? With feet, it's a football it, game. It's just like, yeah, it, people will buy it anyway because they just yeah. want the updated players. But the the Call of Duty one, um, you, you've actually got two different studios, so you know you're going to get a Black Ops style game, then you're going to get a, like a mm. a different style of game, and and that's what freshens that up a little bit. Whereas Ubisoft, it was just Assassin's Creed after Assassin's Creed. They were probably made by different studios. I can't remember who the fuck made them, but it, it's the same thing. You know, it, it might, it, they've got very minimal different mechanics. All they do is change the setting and the game is still exactly the same, yeah. pretty much to a T. And people don't want that. And I, I'm, I'm happy that they've decided to piss off and honestly, do something, it, something about it. Yeah, I honestly think it's it's genuinely promising that they've that they've done this with Assassin's Creed because they've actually, if you think about it, with two of their biggest, well, their two biggest franchises, they've taken some risks in doing this because firstly, Far Cry, Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 4 were the same game. They just were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Far Cry Primal is, uh, yeah, it's still but got you know the what thing where you bon- bonfires and so on. It's still got, you know, it's yeah, got its yeah, own yeah. little version of the towers that you climb and so on and so forth. But that's a significant step away from the setting that Far Cry's enjoyed since its since its inception. Like it, it's not really changed beyond the whole you're a guy with some guns shoot a load of stuff. That is what Far Cry has always well, been. So the first Far that Cry was Far Cry Three. Right, so the first Far Cry, you're on a tropical island running around killing people. Mm. It's a really old game, but it was graphically amazing at the time. Far Cry 2 comes out, and it, it changed up the whole thing. It was You're in Africa, you're dying of malaria. It was trying to be way too serious. I think it's actually a pretty good game, but it got wrecked at the time. It was like, this is shit. It, the old thing with... The, the joke's always about the checkpoints. Like, you've got a car, a, like a Jeep that you drive around, mm. but you always get stopped at checkpoints, and you have to keep finding water and shit to relieve your malaria and all this crap. Then you go unconscious and whatever. Far Cry, then there was like a gap. Far Cry 3 comes out and it is set in the same place effectively as Far Cry 1. It looks the same. Looked nice. But it got Ubisoftified with a shitload, a shitload of things to do all over the map. You go back and look at reviews from prominent YouTubers and all kinds of people. They, they're they like, this is great. This is fucking great. Yeah. That game sold yeah. a shitload. Really, I didn't like it. I mean, when I got onto it, I looked at the map and I, I always felt like I wasn't really... I felt like... Endless side quests. That's what it felt like. I didn't feel like so I was like really icon I mean, okay. overload. That's what I remember. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh I, I mean, God. you could. I never felt like, but you know, I never felt like I was pushing forward to like, okay, I'm gonna. This is my mission. I'm gonna do it. I could just go and do the mission, but there were so many of these things happening all over the place. They kind of annoyed me after a bit. Whereas The Witcher Three did the same thing again, but I actually wanted to go and do those quests because I knew there were every one was different. Yeah. Whereas it was like, how many times did you? release tigers out of a cage in Far Cry 3 and have them kill a camp and then you get the thing, you know, you just do it over and over again. It was yeah. it was boring, like. But yeah, then Far Cry 4 comes out and it's just Far Cry 3 but in the Himalayas. And then they decided to go back in time, which like you said, is a ballsy move and it's pretty good. We'll have to see what the sales figures are. I'm not interested yeah. at all in that game. I don't care about Far Cry at all anymore. I, I, it's just not something I'm going to play. I think it's a bit of a waste of time. I want some meat and some substance to, to that kind of game these days. Yeah, I um, I don't know whether it'll have any more oh, meat yeah. and substance, but just the just the change of setting alone is such a departure from what the series has previously been that yeah. it kind of it does show even if the game ends up basically being Far Cry Four, but way back in time in terms of you know side quest and objective and all this kind of thing, you know whether it's the same structure, which I'd imagine it probably is because I don't think they're going to risk it all by completely changing up the I series. I wonder why they haven't been but, slamming out like uh, the the main character like they did with the previous games. So it was like, oh, look at this guy; he's crazy and he's the face of the game. You know, they haven't don't seem to have been doing know. that with this game. I don't know. I don't know if there is one that's sort of specifically like that. I mean, if there isn't, that would be another big departure. I don't know about it. Well, I don't know about it. I, you would think, I mean, there, there probably isn't because we would have known because you would have seen it spl- like yeah. splashed everywhere. All you just keep seeing is like a saber tooth and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I suppose to sell it by strength. Saber tooth and wolves and mammoths and shit. It's like people are yeah. really not like, okay, that's cool. But it's like doing that and then saying, no Assassin's Creed. We messed up with Unity. It, it it affected Syndicate. Obviously, the series needs changing. We need to do something with it. So we're not gonna we're not doing this one this year. That that respect to Ubisoft really is quite a big move. Can you imagine them? Can you imagine? Like, can you imagine that being done with Call of Duty or Battlefield? No, nope, none of that this year. No, we're not doing that. Well, you know, you know what? Actually, you're talking about that Battlefield. That needs to do something drastic with itself because that is just like is Battlefield Four. Bad. It is well, Battlefield Four is a pretty fucking good game now, but. 
they can't release well, Battlefield 5's coming, but it cannot be a fucking modern military shooter. It, it, what they need to do, and I will fucking love them if they do this. If they come out and they're like, it's a fucking World War II game, I'll be like, mother of God. That would like, be amazing, yeah. I mean, I think they've got Battlefield 1943 was like a shit free-to-play game they made. But there's no reason why you couldn't do 1944 or 1945 because 1944 and 45 is when um, Barbarossa gets pushed back by the Russians. It's when most of the major battles happen, like the Battle of Kursk and... Um, um, what's it bloody called? Operation Market Garden goes to shit, and um, it, the Sicily landings and all of this stuff. So that is like the big period of time in World War Two where every fucking yeah. major attack is going down. If they say that, I'll be like, holy shit! The other thing they could do is go futuristic. Now I ain't too hot about futuristic at the moment. This is more of a personal preference thing. Like I, I I'm like uh, futuristic. Well, see, I, I don't. I, I played twenty one forty two. I play 2142. Yeah. And the, well, you know, everybody the, wants that back, don't they? Well, the, the problem that I had with it was that it was futuristic, but it still just played like Battlefield. So it was like, yeah. I, I, I mean, the setting was, was nice and I liked it, but at the same time, I kind of thought, it's kind of the future, except everything behaves the same way as it did in like the, the year we're in now, which it, is a bit weird. And I didn't, I wasn't a massive fan of it. It was just interesting that they did it, but. I don't know. For me, Battlefield is hardline lost me completely. Four is great <laughs> that's now. Got, that's but when got an we... expansion coming out. Oh, it? I mean, when we played Battlefield Four, it was not in a good place. It was not in a good state. No, it no, was, no. But it was even now, bro. Wrecked, but... Even now, with it being like it runs really well, it looks amazing. One of the best looking games out there. It's just Battlefield Three. Yeah, which is just Battlefield Four, and yeah, yeah, they're the same fucking game, and they need they need to give us what they need to do is get the disillusioned people back into the game, and that's people like me. I like FPS games. I play the shit out of Overwatch and all kinds of games. Problem is, I don't give a shit about this game because it's Battlefield. You know, I mean, we've yeah. got into Battlefield a bit here, a bit away from the topic, but they need to reinvigorate that. Call of Duty is a bit different because Call of Duty it does have the double studio thing on the go, and that is. That is almost like the FIFA style thing with the console crowd where you need to get the latest Call of Duty because it's the latest multiplayer mm. with all the latest unlocks. And it's the same thing every year. And it's a self-sustaining sustaining cycle of just perpetual, slightly newer content. Yeah. And that's it. Whereas Assassin's Creed isn't, is it? Because people get bored, don't they? Yeah, There's no yeah. reason to keep playing it, is there? You know, it's yeah. just a single player game if it's not ra- radically different. I mean, admittedly, I think it's much harder to develop that type of game than it is Call of Duty. Because look at Call of Duty when they changed their multiplayer up um, with Advanced Warfare. They just added quick movement into the side, which totally changed it up. I mean, that's yeah. not really that much to add, is it? Okay, it bombed, so they got rid of it for the next one. They just introduced like different weapons. Yeah, and um, that was like, you know, it's not... different kill streak or whatever. They could have done so many big things and they did something that was fairly big. Kind of, I'd say maybe in the grand scheme of changing stuff up in games, it was like a moderate change. And it had a massive yeah, impact, and people hated it. And it was like, well, okay, so we can't we can't get away with that. Then that's that's put that. Well, that the proves to them that their audience need a certain type of game. Yeah. And so they'll just keep giving them that type of game. It's very simple, I think, when you look at it that way. It's all right looking at it from my point of view. With like, I liked Advanced Warfare because it changed up that game and it made it more like of, a, of an arena shooter rather than this slow paced sort of insta kill shooter mm. multiplayer thing, which is what it was. But the established crowd hated that because they could get killed from behind and all this stuff, and they didn't want that. Yeah. So you know, it, just, it's weird. It's we'll weird, move really. on to Call of Duty in a sec, but there is one other Ubisoft thing that I've just remembered, which was that Watch Dogs 2 was announced. Which... Oh, yeah. Having, that was actually pretty funny, that was. No, having, it's just, by the way, Watch Dogs 2. Yeah, having oh. having said that it was like... Having said, well, they're changing shit with Far Cry Primal. They're doing stuff there. That's impressive. They've said no Assassin's Creed in 2016, so clearly they've learned the lesson. Watch Dogs 2. I don't know how that fits into the uh, the new age of Ubisoft. Do you remember but... watching that bloke at E3 and it was like, fucking hell, this looks yeah. awesome. Yeah. And then do you remember, bloke, watching The Division where nobody knew what it was at this point and <laughs> yeah. they're, they're like, there's been an outbreak and a guy slides up the side of a car and just shuts the door. Close the door. And the crowd are like, whoa. Which is an achievement yeah. now, by the way. <laughs> that's actually an achievement, closing a car door because it's like, because the first people made. I mean, that's kind but of a funny thing. Good to in the way it was like, like good. Yeah. Watch Dogs 2. I mean, there's two videos on the channel from Watch Dogs 2, and both of them are me. Both of them are me just <laughs> hating. Watch Dogs, not 2. Full... You're playing Wait, 2 Watch yet? Two? Okay, no, yeah. there's two... I got confused because I said there was two Watch Dogs videos. I just repeated the word 2. <laughs> there are two Watch Dogs 
for the first Watchdog variety videos on the channel, and one of them was me absolutely hating on the fact that it was so shit because it launched and we wanted to dick about in the multiplayer and make some videos. Didn't work. Like the multiplayer just didn't work. It it was broken, utterly broken. You couldn't even load the game in. I seem to remember. No, it I couldn't even play the game. Yeah, the game. So well... <laughs> the game itself didn't even work for you. It was just the multiplayer that didn't work for me. And then it turned out that it didn't look quite as good as we thought it should. <laughs> and it turned out that's because they wrecked all the all of the graphics before they released it because they just wrecked all the graphics before they released it. So those are the two videos on the channel, which are both like, firstly, Watch Dogs launched and it was shit. Secondly, having had a week to look at Watch Dogs, it should look better than this. And it looks like shit as well. And it shouldn't look like shit. Look at all this stuff. Watch Dogs 2, I'm not going to say I'm excited about that because the first one was just an epic clusterfuck. It was terrible. And they no, were fundamental. I, I, there must be good games. There must be good games that, like, imagine, like, there must be, like, good parts of these games, like, good quests or good, like, elements of the game that you'll yeah. never see because the games are so shit. And imagine the guy who's, like, made that and he's like, you bastards, maybe he's never going to see what I've spent a yeah, year yeah. making. Uh, what, I always get those kind of vibes with these, like, mega studios, like, with tons of people working Yeah, there's got to be, there. there's got to be something in there that someone plays and goes, holy shit, this was awesome but the vast majority of people never get that far because they get two hours in and go this is the worst thing i've ever played i'm not touching <laughs> this ever again i mean even just small things i've mentioned this before but the fact that you could escape the police in watchdogs by jumping in the river because there was no police boats yeah, just, yeah yeah that's yeah, yeah. insanity to me it was supposed to be like ubisoft's version of gta but with crazy hacking and stuff yeah 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 and, and, and they, amazing graphics and then yeah the, 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 and then they they somehow forgot that you could swim and therefore, if you can hide under a bridge, the police won't know where you've gone because they don't have access to, to seafaring vehicles. I mean, I don't <laughs> even understand. But yeah, I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that because that was that was a relatively quiet announcement. As you say, it was like, no Assassin's Creed in 2016. We're re-evaluating the series. We're going to do work with this thing. Oh, Watch Dogs 2 is coming out in 2016. <laughs> so that was it. It was like a little, it's like in size one font at the bottom of the article. Also Watch yeah, Dogs yeah, 2. Yeah. <laughs> And it's also white, so you can't see it on the back panel. Like, <laughs> yeah. Hidden. So back to Call of Duty. Yeah, no. Now this is I this seemed like a really good idea until you read the next bit. Call of Duty Black Ops 3 receives multiplayer only starter pack. Sounds like a good idea, yeah? Call of Duty, that's what people yeah, use yeah, it yeah. for. PvP, multiplayer, hey, people hey, like that. Hey, hey, I seen the title and I was like, this is a fucking great idea. And then you see underneath, on sale until the end of February. <laughs> So Activision has launched a starter pack for Call of Duty Black Ops 3, giving players a taste of the game's multiplayer options. The $14.99 release is currently exclusive to Steam and will only be on sale until February the 29th. I... Uh, this is a good idea, right? It is a good idea. It is. It is like, a good idea, yeah. I, I, when I seen this, I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is a great idea. I would pay 11 quid to play Call of Duty multiplayer, right? But then I thought to myself, hang on a minute. They don't sell their old games on the cheap, never. I mean, it, it, Call of Duty 2 is probably fucking still 50 quid or something. Mm. They they don't ever drop the price of their old Call of Duties, which is a bit weird. I mean, there must still be people yeah. buying them. I don't know why they do that. It's like maybe it's to... Actually, you know what? I think I know why they do that. Because if you think about it, if you if you don't buy Black Ops 3 now... You're going to buy Black Ops 3, uh, 4 or whatever the next game is. It won't be a Black Ops game. It'll be something else. Um, or you wait until that launches. Then you buy this current one for half price. Then there'll be a whole culture of people who are buying the game for half price instead of buying the game for full price. So it almost yeah. forces you to buy it for full price. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so maybe yeah. by keeping the price of the older ones always uh, to a high degree sort of helps with that. But yeah, I think it's a great idea. Why it's just until a certain month is stupid. It should just be forever. If they if they sold the components of the game, oh my god! It I mean, hell, sense, I wouldn't buy, you know what? I'd buy the single player component for for eleven quid. Fuck the multiplayer, I wouldn't play it. I'd play I'd play the single player. Yeah, yeah. If it works. I mean, going, don't get a black screen. Right. It says it play. Oh yeah, we tried. We tried black. I I I'd, I'd forgotten we had Black Ops Three, but we did try and play, it, didn't we? Was it for? A, yeah. Was it for? A, was it for zombies? It was um, when zombies got an update because the zombies yeah, were going yeah, to be dead yeah, good. Yeah. I think it might have worked out. I've always been... In fact, I think I might have installed it. I tried to, like, load it, uh, install it ages ago. I play tried it. I this. I've never it. done a Black Ops Zombies, and apparently Black Ops 3 Zombies mode is dead good, but it, did, <laughs> it didn't fucking work. Um, but yeah, yeah it says I've, it, so... I've got it installed, but I've got 10 minutes played because it just was a black screen. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's, it says here that the players who pick up the limited multiplayer release will have will only have access to Black Ops 3's ranks, matches, arena, and free run, as well as additional features like the theater and weapon paint shop. What's lacking is the rest of Black Ops 3 campaign, campaign modes. So star pack owners won't be able to play in custom multiplayer matches either, and the level cap is set to 55. Players are also unable to reset their stats in the bare bones release. What reset the stat? Oh, is that that prestige thing? No, that's where you go all the way around again, ain't it? You go up to yeah, the no, highest. Prestige and then you... is... Yeah, prestige was like um, you remember um, last stand. Yeah, where you could you were, yeah, shock well, all your war gear in, and you got a little, I, you just got a little medal <laughs> next to your stud. name. Yeah, no, you got the service. That stud, was, it, I was, it was like, yeah, stud. I'm the force commander. Let's do it. And then I was just left with a chainsaw and a bolt. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Fist. I was like, what the fuck? I, I could have died. <laughs> I couldn't even get past the tyranid round. I played that mode so often. I could have. I could have done it with like three of the champions that you could use. But it went lose normal war gear. So I was like, ah, and then it, you'd I'll never be it. able to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking hell. Yeah, it's this is a really good idea. The fact that it's limited until 29th of February is absolutely baffling. I do not understand it at all. I think they've take they've clearly looked at what Games Workshop are doing and have been like, yeah, that's a good idea. We'll release something people want, but make it limited edition so that then we limit the number of sales that we've got because people love it when they want to give us money and we don't let them. It's it's really bizarre. It's a really bizarre attitude. On a similar note, Elite Dangerous has launched standalone which is elite dangerous arena which is At five the... quid okay and uh well arena is the pvp portion of elite dangerous it is now available to buy that's separately. kind of interesting I, you know i've not played that this is the one where you get an eagle i think and you can just fly around and kill each other you know the fast moving ship yeah yep it is you might be able is... to get the other the other the sidewinder as well basic one it is uh it is just it is just the pvp section it is only five quid and it's so you can play against each other in the close quarter combat championships in arena mode in Elite Dangerous and Elite Dangerous Horizons. Again, actually quite a good idea. Like if if you wanted, if all you wanted was PvP for your idea. space sim, five quid for that. You know that's what? Not I'm bad. Start, I, I'm liking this idea of breaking a game down into its components and selling off each bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's kind of like Star Citizen, ain't it, really, in a way? Yeah, <laughs> it kind of is, yeah. Aren't they doing something as well? Aren't they, like, um, after there a, was, a there certain was a, point now, you... There was a free... They did a free-to-play weekend not that long ago, and I think they might yeah. be doing something else as well, but I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. No, it's to do with the price, and I don't think you get everything now. If you buy, Like, well, not now, but in a couple of weeks' time, when you buy the game, it's more expensive and you don't get everything or something, whereas the original back is like, I've got everything. But the interesting thing with that game is, are people actually going to buy the game once it once it launches i've you know, you know I've, like what's gonna i've happen wondered then? that myself because i mean speaking as an idiot who dropped what was it 140 i actually looked back as well by the way i've been saying 140 dollars all these years no it was euros not dollars oh so it's, it's oh significantly worse <laughs> it's significantly worse i even looked at the exchange rate i was like maybe this works out better no no, it doesn't. That doesn't work out there. That's that's significantly worse. That is. But I've played that game more than you. And I... <laughs> oh no, you oh. say that. You say that. I had to. I had to ditch. I think it was six hundred gig of recording of me trying to get into the, just get into my ship and fly off in Star Citizen. Hours, hours oh, upon shit. hours yeah, upon that space hours station. Yeah, upon yeah, yeah, yeah. hours. In the end, I just went into the arena, like the Vandal Swarm bit, where you play against the the uh, AI. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I played that for a couple of hours just to relax me because I was like, if I don't get into that fucking ship this time, I'm going to cut <laughs> someone. I'm not having this anymore. I never got into the goddamn ship off the space station. But yeah, it is Star Citizen's a weird one because I think it wanted me, It might end up being one of the few games sort of just in the history of games where the vast majority of players bought it not just before it was released, but before it was even close to being finished. Because the sheer number of people that keep signing up for that and the sheer amount of money they spend of it and the amount of publicity it still gets. Like, it still gets... Star Citizen has not disappeared. It is not a game where you don't hear about it that much anymore. You still hear about Star Citizen and people then go, oh, yeah, I forgot about Star Citizen. How much is that? Oh, that ship's only $20. I'll buy that. And then they pledge. (laughs) And they get... It's like another person. And it just goes on and on and on. I mean, how much money have they raised now? I know it's, it's, million, eh? it's like 107 million or so. It was on the BBC the other day. That's why I know about it. It's something, yeah, it's something crazy. 
Um, they were going on about like they were interviewing somebody about it or something. I don't know, it's a bit weird. They've taken it off the front page at this point, which always makes me laugh because it's like, lads, we just we don't care anymore. We've uh, we, we've got we've got all of the funding. We're not going to bother to show you how much we've got on the <laughs> we front have page all because of the cash money. So they've raised one hundred and eight million seven hundred nineteen thousand one hundred forty eight dollars, um, and there are one million two hundred eighty two thousand two hundred thirty four people who have pledged to start Star Citizen at this time. Yeah. That's honestly, that's not a bad player base. Especially when a million, you consider, yeah, well, the, 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 a million players is a lot, yeah. Especially when you everybody consider that gets the, carried away with with like World of Warcraft numbers, oh and shit yeah, like yeah. That. I mean, it, like one point two can, million is is pretty damn good. Especially when you consider that the game isn't really a game yet, <laughs> that it's still yeah. in like early beta slash alpha, and that alpha doesn't work, and that it, you know that all like the components that you've bought into. A good portion of them don't exist yet. Or at least if they do exist, it's in like some god awful pre alpha stage on some developer's computer where, you know, he's the only one who can touch it because it'll explode if anyone else does it. That's a lot of players for a game that is not even close to being finished. And it, it just it does make me wonder whether it's gonna be one of the what I say one of the first, because you know, something else might come along. Although I say that, I, I kind of get the feeling maybe the golden age of Kickstarter might have ended at this point. But I think it's going to be one of the one of those games that kind of stands out as being this had more players before it launched than some games get just total ever. Like Star Citizen, yeah, but they're now. not players, though, are they? They're not players. They're just people who like the idea, aren't they? It's like a different type of game. Yeah, it's true. like I, I, yes, I I like the idea. I mean, what makes me laugh is imagine the people who've pledged to it and never play it. Like they, they just for some reason never play the game. There's got to be some. There There's has got to be some. some. I just some man who's dropped ten k on it. <laughs> and he's I like, oh, I've got my ten thousand dollars. You know what? I'm just gonna uh, do. I'm gonna do a, a quick. I mean, this is not scientific a at quick, all. A quick dance. A quick dance. A quick boom. <laughs> uh, so there is what is it? Well, I'd say there's 108 million. So 108. Uh, 719, 213, and there are one million, 282 thousand. 234 people. So if you divide those two figures together, it's about $84 per person. Well, about $85 yeah. per person. Oh, and obviously, so it, that's, it, that's obviously incredibly skewed because some people have spent 10 grand and some people have spent $20. Yeah, but, but I kind of like that. I kind of like that because that would be... that. That's no different than somebody buying Star Wars Battlefront than buying the season pass. That's true, actually. I hadn't thought about that. Or in my case, buying Battlefront... And then buying it, uh, the next one, and the season pass what? for both. What did I say? But oh what? yeah, no, yeah, yeah. You, you're an idiot wanker who bought two copies of the game, basically. Yeah, with your 150 you quid or something. You're crazy. It's 140 euros. Don't get you excited. You idiot wanker. I just saw my house. I had cash. <laughs> That's my excuse. <laughs> I had cash. What the fuck? <laughs> I had cash. I was waving it around in one of them little money clips. <laughs> <laughs> and he threw the money at him. Oh. I chucked it and what's his name? Chris Roberts. It's just like, oh, you dickhead. <laughs> threw it. He'd be like, face. what's this? <laughs> People are giving me hundreds of thousands here, kid. Christ. Oh, God. <laughs> Ridiculous. There's no. I, the actual topic of whatever that was is gone so thoroughly now. There's no it segue. Is... Warren Spector bloke is joining other side. To lead Guy, Shock yeah. Three. Now this is good news. Hey, I this, like this. No, this is a good. This is a good segue because this is. Um, yeah, you know, you're going on about like funding games or whatever from old games that could be good funded thingy thingies. This is kind of like that in a way, <laughs> although it's not being funded in that way. But you know what I'm saying? If somebody walked up to me and said System Shock Three on Kickstarter, I'm giving you money. Yeah, no, I'll give you that. That's System especially Shock Two is a brilliant game. It, it System Shock Two is quality. I mean, I, I, it's it unsettled me, but then I'm a I'm a weakling when it comes to games. But it, it, it is it quite a, unsettling though. It was a it was a it was a really good game. I think you know, part of the problem is I kind of expected when people kept calling like Bioshock the the spiritual successor successor to System <laughs> no. Shock. I kind of got excited because like I was like I could play version. I could play System Shock and it was unsettling, but it wasn't unsettling enough to make me stop playing it. Yeah, when I played Bioshock. I was expecting that and I didn't get it, and so Bioshock yeah. felt a bit crap. I think just because I was expecting something on that level. 
and uh, to buy a shock was fine. I don't have a problem with it. It's not like it was a yeah, bad game. Yeah, shock's not. Cr- it's not crap, but, but it's not it, the same. It wasn't on the same. It wasn't on the same level by any means as System Shock Two, which is probably why I I didn't. I don't ever think it even completed Bioshock because it just didn't tickle me in the same way. It wasn't like oh yes, System Shock Two is very intense, right. like a very intense. Like um, you have a sense of like despair and loss and you're screwed and it's like you've got to just somehow work this mess out and it's really good for doing that and if system shot 3 does that then jesus christ yeah i mean, and I mean as it as it says warren specter was producer designer and director on the likes of the first system shot deus ex and the ultimate series yeah, yeah. so the fact that he's leading which system i mean if you want 3, pedigree yeah yeah deus ex is something we should have commented on as well i mean that is uh that is a great game that yeah. is one of the best games ever made yeah. first one like um and obviously, System Shock, the first one. Uh, I, I don't think it's nowhere near as good as System Shock Two, but I think that's just because it is technically limited. There is a there there, there were large jumps in game technology between yeah. System Shock and System Shock Two, so they're wildly different games. Like you can go and play System Shock Two right now, okay, with graphical mods. There are some like strange things because it's an older game the way it works, but. It's still very much like you've got the whole yeah, FPS yeah. vibe of it sort of thing going on. Whereas System Shock, uh, not really. Yeah. I mean, I, I was already looking forward to System Shock 3, but now it's just like... I kind of all forgot about the, it, but All yeah. aboard the hype train. <laughs> just don't disappoint, otherwise there'll be issues. Severe issues. Like as what these lads, Rodeo, has had. Here's the news that Rodeo stops making new games after poor Warhammer 40,000 Death Watch sales. <laughs> so, uh, oh, did you developer... make a video on this? Yeah, it wasn't great. You developer caused Rodeo them games. to lose their job. I... Sorry, lads. Uh, maker of Warhammer Quest is in trouble after Warhammer 40k failed to find an audience. Staff were made redundant at the Guildford based studio last November after the release of Death Watch on iOS platforms and PC. Rodeo chief Ben Murch told Eurogamer that the staff who remain supporting Death Watch to new platforms, one of which will be announced shortly. But the upshot is no new games will be developed, at least for the time being. Despite Death Watch being the best game we've created as a studio and our highest rated Metacritic game, the changes in the market have meant that we are unable to continue development as we'd initially planned, Murch said. Coupled with some personal issues within the team, Rodeo Games are currently taking a break from developing any new titles. The team will continue to support our existing titles. The big takeaway from this is when it says fail to find an audience and that he said, you know, it, it, the changes in the market have meant that we are unable to continue. The problem with what happens with Warhammer 40k, the franchise as a whole, is it keeps being given to to companies like Rodeo. Now, I'm not going to say that Rodeo are a bad developer. That's not fair at all. Death Watch is a perfectly solid mobile game. But the problem is the overlap between people who play Warhammer Forty Thousand and people who play over, who play mobile games is is not big. It's not a big. It's not a big overlap. Like if you sit someone down and go, you can either read a Horus Heresy book, model a forty k army, model a thirty k army, or play Warhammer Forty K Death Watch. What are you going to do? They will pick one of the first three. They're not going to pick the fourth one because. It's just you know if that Death Watch game, game instead of Warhammer related stuff was you know was little green fuzzy monsters or something fighting it, it probably would do way better because yeah. it's, that's more mobilely. I yeah. think it's, it's no. I think really... that's a, I think that's a fair thing to say. Um, these uh, this company Rodeo obviously you know have you know they've got talent they've made the game and it, it doesn't it's not a bad they're not bad looking games I never really liked them I thought they were a bit boring to play but they were just mobile like they, games that's that's the thing yeah, they were yeah. just. They were just mobile games. They rely, and, like Games Workshop, they're relying on using their IP, and that's fine. I mean, the Warhammer one is based on the Warhammer world that doesn't even exist anymore as well, isn't it? Warhammer yeah. Quest. <laughs> yeah, it is. So that's Games Workshop being arseholes. But the Death Watch one, you think, okay, Death Watch is actually... I think it's on Steam, isn't it, this as well? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's on yeah. Steam. That's where my um, copy is. Yeah, because I mean, it didn't have issues with the mouse pointer or something. Yeah, it, it didn't like, like it at all. It was, it, was still, yeah. it was still optimized for touch screens. But this is the thing, it's... I kind of feel bad for these mobile developers who create perfectly decent mobile games, but they're flawed from the outset because they are aimed at a group of people who, generally speaking, don't really give a shit about mobile games. Like, I, I know quite a few people who, who play Warhammer 40k. I know 
quite i know i know someone who used to work for games workshop and it's what like, have you ever played game this game would you play on your phone what game would you play on your phone what mobile game would you play 40k you know the, the one i've played the most is um uh, drop pod assault horus heresy drop pod oh, assault yeah. or something yeah. the estevan one and you know why because it's just a shit clone of uh cache of clans whatever that game's called <laughs> yeah. and uh it's just got warhammer units in and it's a mindless waste of time but at least it's sort of warhammery and it's like mm, i didn't spend no money on it because it was shit but yeah I, I mean i'm at a struggle what what game would i play on my phone what games do i even play on my phone well none <laughs> really I've i played just, a, yeah, a I version just... of risk on my phone which <laughs> looks like absolute shit yeah this world conquer domination game I don't play. Right. And thinking about it, I do not play anything on my phone. I have no games installed on my phone whatsoever because I've got I've got four G, and I've got a twenty five yeah, gig got, limit. So your I, internet just takes over. Yeah, yeah. I've either got headphones or I've got anything else. Like I, I could play Death Watch. Or alternatively, I could spend hours on the the Warhammer forty k Lexiconum site, reading about all the Primarchs or downloading what is it the um battle scribe app and building yeah and building the list yeah building lists this look at that 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 is what i've played on my phone it looks like shit but can you see like the regions of land yeah, and you've got yeah. like values uh, like you know you, the strength of your army and you move in that that is the game i played the most on this and i don't know i just uh i don't want to talk about mobile gaming it's a shame it's a yeah. shame but if you if you're making a product that's not working, then you you just that's the, thing, the harsh reality of, of of an economy is you you just can't make that product anymore. It doesn't matter yeah. if your heart's in the right place or you you know it's just how it happens. It's never nice to actually see a company go under, but on the other hand, if they're making a product that is not aimed at a group of people, or at least it's aimed at a group of people who are not receptive of it, then that's just the way it's going to go, and it sucks for them. But eventually, maybe it might word through to the higher ups that actually pumping out endless mobile titles might not be the way to go with the ip maybe focus on something more like well we've got know. battlefleet gothic coming out and that looks well okay that looks pretty good but it, it does. looks horrendously shit optimization wise mm. it looks dead laggy i thought i mean it does say you know pre-alpha on the yeah. videos but it's like really i bad hope it's smooth out a lot before it's released but it's like it, given a choice i mean what it, as somebody like who I mean, all my. Do you know what I'm doing at the hospital? Most but it's a PC the game, though. In it, it's not a mobile yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, at the hospital at the moment, I'm making Warhammer 30 k list from a word bearers. I'm looking up for information on the 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 sixth uh, book, Horus Heresy book from Forge World, which has got all this stuff for the Shattered Legions and the Knights Errant and the uh, Errant. Errant. How have you pronounced that? How do you pronounce Errant. that? Errant. Errant That's I it. think. Yeah. yeah Knight um, Errant. Yeah. yeah. And like the Black Shields, I'm I'm doing that. I'm not playing Death Watch because it's like it's it is it's a really it's a really pale shadow of what the tabletop is. And if you're a massive fan of War and 40k, you're not gonna play something that is a pale shadow of the thing that you really enjoy. You want something different or something that augments what you're already doing. That's why Space Marine was so good. Because it's like, yeah, the tabletop's great, but you cannot be a solo Space Marine kicking the shit out of a thousand orcs in the tabletop because your one Space Marine will die. And also, you well, don't get to do it yourself. So it's like it's, uh, it's like Uncle Sty si said. I think this year will be the year of good for EK games. Anyway, it better be. The well is running dry, severely dry. On the upside, Dark Souls Three is coming, which I am actually quite excited uh, about. Yeah, I am actually quite yeah, excited yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, this is like flying under the radar for me because I've not really been like. It's like, oh shit, it's coming out like next month, isn't it? Yeah, Start yeah, of March it's, or something. It's soon. I'm I looking like, forward shit. to it. I, I, I'm gonna. I can't wait to stream it, bloke, and get fucking <laughs> obliterated. Backseat games into next fucking millennium. Well, I'm gonna... like, oh my god, don't you know that if you do this, you do... I'm like, fuck you, man. Oh, I'm gonna die. I, well, I can't I'm, handle I... it anyway. Oh, that XCOM two game kills me, man. Anyway, oh god, I'm just <laughs> like, I'm a blathering mess because I've been streaming that before we did Hotfix because we're doing it uh, at a later time, and I'm just like, my brain is destroyed. <laughs> I did. My watch, mind. Is I did watch the stream. I... It was fucking rough. It was. Bad. Right, not a you, UFO not you. Crash. Before, before people in the chat go, ooh, no. no, the game, the game was harsh. Like the game it was me bad. Was harsh, I, real harsh. I, I'm a retard, so I'm playing it on legend difficulty, which is insane. But then I installed the Muton Centurion mod, which is from the Long War guys, which adds in a super solid Muton, who is a Centurion. 
who buffs everybody around him and he's got shitloads of health and just loads of damage. He's a mini boss, yeah, and he shows up. And it, when he shows up, it's like, okay, you just kill him, right? There were 20 of them. <laughs> what? The it was fuck? it was not it was it was not what you want to see. It was bad. No. It was real it, bad. It, like it must have been broken. It, <laughs> anyway. That's why I might look a bit battered. Because I have been battered. <laughs> XCOM beat the shit out of you. But yeah, Dark Souls 3. It's coming out so I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really hoping that Eve's home by the time it comes out. Because I want to make quite a few videos on this. Because we trialed that too long, didn't watch thing with a really short cut down video a few weeks ago, which I, I'll put a link in the description in case you haven't seen it. But Dark Souls 3, perfect for that. Record it for a couple of hours, make a few videos of cut down things happening, be quality. There is now Season Pass. It is listed on Steam, but there is no Steam description. So it doesn't actually say <laughs> what the pass will offer, season pass. only that it will include two DLC packs. Um, and the Season Pass currently sells for 20 quid. Or it can be had as part of the Dark Souls 3 Deluxe Edition, which is listed at 60 quid, and the Standard Edition is 40 quid. So there's no deal. But you can just get them all at the same time. I don't... It sounds weird, but... Dark Souls... It always seems weird that there's a dark, there's a season pass for Dark Souls. And I have no idea why this is, because the first one had DLC slash expansion. The second one had DLC slash expansion. But for some reason, the fact that they're selling it up front the way that it Bloodborne, seems a bit yeah. different to the way they've done it before. Oh, or, yeah. I don't know whether I, it's just I'm imagining it, but... This is one of those games, though, that can kind of do whatever the hell it likes, and it doesn't really matter that it's going to get negative reactions some way. It doesn't really matter, because the only thing that will kill this game is if the performance on PC is shit, which it has no right to be. No. Dark Souls 2 was 60 FPS. Now, I want more than 60 FPS, yeah, and I want higher res textures and all of that stuff. If I get that, I'll be very happy. I know that the um, if you buy Dark Souls 3 on Xbox One, you get Dark Souls, which confirmed that Dark Souls is now being added to backwards compatibility, Yeah, which um, Red Dead Redemption is. And that might be something I could turn my Xbox on for because everybody goes crazy about that. And obviously it's from um, uh, what they call the G2A, G2A, GTA <laughs> lot. Yeah, Rockstar. From them guys. Yeah, Rockstar. So... They, uh, it's obviously got pedigree, but I can't play it because I don't have an Xbox 360, but I've got an Xbox One, so I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think as long as it works well, I mean, Dark Souls I, 2 was not as good as Dark Souls 1, but it was still a solid game. Like, no, Scott of the first sin. But, but yeah, I know, but but what's the face? He's back for Dark Souls 3. He's, uh, forgot his name. I'm, I'm tired, whatever. Yeah, I can't pronounce it anywhere. That I guy. Read. I don't like trying to read his name out. <laughs> Um, Bloodborne or even though it's not a Dark Souls Souls game it's still the same kind of game but a different type of game but, but infinitely better than Dark Souls 2 I don't care what you say to me Dark Souls 2 is a oh shit we made a lot of money off Dark Souls just rush Dark Souls 2 out it doesn't feel the same it's not as like no. the world Too isn't disjointed. as crafted it isn't as like I've not played the the enhanced edition or whatever it's called. You know where they change some things up. But well, I, I when I played, played through that it quite at launch, a bit, and it's yeah. it's not it's not that it doesn't do really that much to fix the way it feels. Like it fixes the technical issues and it makes the it makes it kind of a bit more joined together in a way. But overall, the world still feels disjointed. It still feels like stuff is out of place. It still well, doesn't it, have it the same enough impact. to feel like Dark Souls. It's still Dark Souls, but it's just it's just like oh hey, you liked certain aspects of Dark Souls one. We bashed this together, and it didn't really feel like the same sort of epic world where you know I felt totally yeah, lost yeah. in Dark Souls. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? You yeah. didn't know what the shit was going on. And it took loads of like reading. This is where you you'd watch people like Vati Vidya on YouTube. It'd be like holy crap! Like and he's explaining lore to you, and like wow, I can't believe that's actually a thing. Dark Souls 3 needs to do that. Bloodborne did yeah. that. Dark Souls 3, I'm hoping, will do that because the main man's heavily involved in it again. And it is the, I think it's the end of the Souls series, I think. So it should be crazy good and it should have dead good DLC. Yeah. Could be one of the best games that come out all year. But talking about franchise fatigue, been in quite a lot of Dark Souls in there recently. A bit of Souls games coming out. And it's like, if this is just a bit shit, it's, I mean, it, it's not going to be compared to Dark Souls 2. It'll be compared to Dark Souls. Because that's yeah. the masterpiece. It'll be like Dark Souls. How do you stand up against that? If it's a better game than that, then fucking hell. Yeah, 
definitely. I, the tra- I mean, I, I have to admit, I've been... I don't do this very often, but I've watched the trailers for it, and I'm getting sucked in by the trailers. It doesn't happen very often with games anymore, where I watch a trailer and be like, holy shit, I want that. But the Dark Souls 3 trailer is... I mean, it's quintessential Dark Souls. It's all mystery and all, like, unexplained statements. Yeah, you don't know what's going on, yeah. I don't know what the fuck's happening, but that massive giant guy who suddenly, like, becomes almost on fire at the end, I want to find that guy. I want to know what's going on with him. I didn't get get that in any way through Dark Souls 2, and yet I'm already getting that just from the promotion we hear with Dark Souls 3. Oh, no, big bad king. You must go and sort him out. Oh, kill the queen. Oh, you know, then it... It had no. The problem with that it had no mystery. That's the thing. That's what Dark Souls yeah, does yeah, really it, well. It's it's there's it, mystery it, it everywhere. Had a, well, hang on. It had a little bit of mystery, but it was predictable mystery. Like you knew, you kind of could guess what was going to happen, and it, it wasn't. You didn't feel like you've been on this epic journey into lands unknown. It was just like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's it. It just wasn't as good. Hopefully, Dark Souls three no. will be go straight back to being nothing but quality. I should so, play Dark Souls again. Do it. Do it on stream. Soul level zero. That's too much shit to face. <laughs> it, it fucking takes me. It fucking takes me a week to do one mission on XCOM 2 <laughs> on this difficulty. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so we've got a couple of things left. So the first is that PlayStation VR is due this autumn. Uh, according to GameStop CEO, which is actually sooner How than I thought it was. I don't know anything about this technically, because this is like the technical aspect of this. There is no way the PS4 hardware can run well, virtual reality. <laughs> that's, oh, I'll be honest, you that's need a fucking what I was thinking. TI to fucking run this shit. Like the Oculus Rift headset. Yeah. It must be a really gimped down headset. It's got to be. It, it, yeah, it cannot be anywhere near the quality. and uh, All the games are just like Unity games on it. Or yeah, something and that's like the thing. No textures I, or anything. I don't know what games there are for it right now for PS4. Well, I'm assuming there are no games for it right now for PS4 because it's not out yet and so why the fuck would anyone bother? But I don't know. It's <laughs> it's just kind of... This seems sort of sprung a bit. Like, we've heard about the different VR products. We know Oculus Rift was launched. We know that Valve is working on theirs. But then it was suddenly like, oh, PlayStation VR due this autumn. And I'm just thinking... And what are you going to sell with it? How's it going to work? You know, what what, it, what, is that just is that is that it? Was that the end? Just Judy sort and goodbye. GameStop CEO says that in an interview with Fox News regarding the booming VR industry, Rain said we are right now preparing for the launches of major VR products. We're in discussion with Oculus, HTC, Vive, and with Sony. It's a big launch. We're getting ready for it. We will launch the Sony product this fall, and we're in discussions with the other two players. So that's what Games C- GameStop CEO has said that they're, they're just they're launching the C- the Sony product this fall. But like, <laughs> with what? Like this is the thing that gets me. With what? For what? How is it going to work? What games are going to be with it? How is it going to be bundled? Like how much is it going to cost? It's nothing. It's just like yeah, we're doing it. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, but isn't that just the Game Spot guy or whatever? leaking it it is but usually i mean they're terrible for it. i don't know why they still tell these people things because it's always GameStop or game that leaks it like game fucking game taiwan is like oh yeah buy far cry 9 or something just leak it on the yeah. website by accident or oh there's been a listing on GameStop's website for the next call of duty dlc like eight months before i'm supposed to know about it don't tell these people anything they're idiots they can't, they can't keep it quiet and so this guy's like yeah yeah sony sony vr we're, we're launching that this fall but that's all he's got to say. Does he not? Maybe he doesn't know, bloke. <laughs> maybe that's why he isn't said anything. Maybe it's like, yeah, we know we're launching it, but we got a naff all else. I don't know what, don't know what we're going to do with it. <laughs> oh, no, what the fuck? It, Buy it, please. <laughs> um, it'll, be, it'll be like when the PS4 launched and all it had was that Rezo Gun game. <laughs> Whatever it was. What was it? I remember. it was Rezo Gun in Killzone. That, yeah. was, that, that was it, Yeah, yeah. It? I, I had... Um, oh god some people come over and i was like look at this right ps4 and they're like wow i got the camera plugged in i was like yeah look at the camera the the playroom and it, that lasted for about five minutes and then the <laughs> camera got put in a drawer never came out again and they were like well what games have you got i says i've got um i had assassin's creed black flag but that was already out i think on other consoles yeah. it was just like this was like the ps4 version of it or something um and i had uh the kill zone game which looked dead good at 30 FPS, but it was a shit game. And that was it. And then the best game I had <laughs> and the game I played on it the most was Rezo Gun. I was like, yeah. And I used to get to the fucking... I think I had quite a good score on Rezo Gun. But it was just like a 
Right, but it wasn't a flash game, but it was like an indie game, and it was also it was free <laughs> with with the console. Yeah, so it wasn't yeah, even it was like just, an actual thing. Well, it, it was wasn't just... free. You had to pay for the bloody PS Plus thing for it. Oh yeah, that's true. So, that's th- true. This is when I was having my my uh, brief affair with with uh, consoles and Sony stuff. This is when I bought the I bought the PS3 uh, and I played Demon Souls for a bit on it. Really enjoyed it. Then uh, I got a Vita, and actually, um, oh god, Soul Sacrifice, I think it was. That was yeah, a really yeah, fucking I, good game. I played a bit of that on your Vita. That was quite good. There's a lot. There's a lot of good games with that Vita. But then it was, you know, you know, what, right. This is going to sound really bad. But what fucked me over with the Vita is the price of the memory cards. The Sony yeah. memory cards are like fifty quid for eight gig or something. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, because I was getting a load of free games with uh, my PS Plus, and they were they were really like well received games for the Vita. And I was also getting code sent to me for Vita games through. Uh, Companies that obviously just want you know YouTubers to look at their games and stuff, even though it's impossible to record the Vita. <laughs> but um, I, w- I actually wanted to install them and play them, but I couldn't. And then I looked around for the price of the memory cards, and they're too much. But you know, I- I've still got that Vita in a bag, and I hardly use it. But it is that is it's almost like it's going to be one of those things where it's you know it's, it is slowly being phased out, and I don't think that many new games get released for it anymore. And I think a lot of supporters kind of stop for it. But there is a a good catalog of games out there for that yeah. and it is a very like it's a very good mobile games console that is but it's just came out in the era when smartphones became popular and so it's, yeah, mobile it's games like, it's a, like a little way. too late ain't it it's just not quite yeah and it, it's not too like nintendo enough you know like the nintendo yeah. 3ds it's like a kid kind of thing whereas the vita was like here are you know hardcore adult gamer or well, i've got to be honest it still is a fucking really good console and i've got the one with the oled screen in as well so it's the older one it's got the better screen the new ones yeah. don't have the the good screening because they, they just got an LCD. But yeah, uh... I still don't know what they're gonna do with PlayStation VR. But yeah. now I can't. I, now I'm wondering whether they should bring well, out a fucking Vita. I don't even have a PlayStation Four now, anyway, do I? Because I just fucking I give that away. Oh uh, yeah, I've well, still got well, I've got I've got it, but it's on loan. Let's say I haven't even turned mine on since I stopped playing Destiny last year. Just yeah. goes to show Destiny how much was all right, though, wasn't it, for a while? Oh, yeah, I Destiny... mean, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Destiny, but uh, the PS4 itself is is just... It's hidden behind the TV. I use a third monitor, so I can't even see you know it if, at this point. You know, if you didn't have a PC, and uh, imagine you still had your gaming taste you've got now, would that PS4 satisfy you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't bother with an Xbox One. I think I'd just have the PS4, to be but honest. But how would it... Sat- what games would you play on it? Well, I'd probably end up playing things like Bloodborne and Destiny and... I mean, eventually Overwatch is coming for the consoles, ain't it? They've said that. Right, like you can play though. Diablo as well. Yeah, Diablo. Yeah, no, it is. It is. Overwatch is. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that, I, honestly, I think I think there are plenty of decent games on the consoles. It's just I don't need to play them they're on the consoles. Just better on PC. Yeah, because yeah. they're better on PC. I mean, that's an, that's an old thing, but everyone always bangs on about with PC games. Oh, yeah, it's always better on PC. But now, because it's just more... so easy to port between the consoles and the PCs, it's and just like... there's more choice on the PC. That's the other thing as well. Like, I understand the ease of use thing and wanting to just be able to put a disc in and whatever, but you ain't going to be playing StarCraft 2 on your console. You ain't going to be playing Command & Conquer Generals on your console. You ain't going to be able to play... I don't know, did Transistor come out on consoles? Like, I mean, Transistor's one of my favourite games ever. It's on the iPad, which I haven't tried yet. But I don't know if that's available on consoles. But it's like, there's just there's more. There's just more on PC. That's... It's just it, really. This is more. Speaking of, actually, you know, actually, there's just been. I've just got an update here on Rodeo Games, and it says they've actually. No, we we're not laying anyone off. Hey. Eh? News of Rodeo's demise began to spread earlier this month after former employee Matthew Spencer took to uh, the Touch Arcade forums to announce he he and the majority of Rodeo team have moved on. Uh, however, Rodeo are just saying that no, we're not, and this is a load of crap. So I don't know what's going on there. Well, ben, I mean, Rodeo Chief Ben Merck told Eurogamer. That's what was in the article we had earlier. Oh, God knows what they're doing then. He says, despite Death Watch being the best game we've created as a studio and our highest rated Metacritic game, the changes in market have meant that we're unable to continue development as we initially planned, said the developer. Coupled with some personal issues within the team, Rodeo Games is currently taking a break from developing any new titles, but we'll just continue to support our existing titles. We'll announce our plans for future releases at the appropriate time. We intend to carry on making games we love for the people who love them. So hang on, is he we saying don't. is he saying that they they haven't they've not ditched anyone, but they 
are not making any new titles, but the other guy is the one who's saying that they've released people. Yeah. And it also does say that, um, but it also says coupled with some personal issues within the team. So I wonder if that's like the personal issue is one one guy's a fucking liar. It's, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, 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 Rodeo Games is dead. And they're like, uh, <laughs> excuse me. I think you'll find that's the, not true. He's like the, the brother or something of, the, the, I don't know. He's not, he didn't even work for him. Cheeky bastard. That might not be true. I just made that up. Um, anyway, t- let's see the last two. So Five Nights at Freddy's World RPG is back oh, for free. Fuck this. I haven't even Steam. played this game. I haven't even played any of now, these see, games. You know? This is the thing. I look at them and I'm like, this is just Markiplier wank, baby. Yeah, I, I don't give a shit about Five Nights at Freddy's. At the same, and I'm going to say right now, the guy who made it, not in need of money, because the game sold ridiculously well. There's like five of the fucking things, not including the RPG. And so he's obviously made an insane amount of cash. And there's a fucking film being made of Five Nights at Freddy's. So therefore he is rolling in it. <laughs> on the other hand, on the other hand, Having money does not necessarily make you less greedy. So the fact that he has pulled it off Valve, but off, off Valve, off Steam, <laughs> what the fuck we're talking about? Because I read the word Valve on the page. Um, he pulled it from Steam when people said that it, it was missing features. He said, you're absolutely right. It was missing features. It shouldn't have been released in the state it was. It's gone. He got rid of it. He fixed it. He put it back on Steam. He's not charging for it anymore. It's completely free. And people who paid for it originally can get their money back if they desire. So they can go to him and go, I paid money for your game, it wasn't good enough, can I my money back? And he will refund them. Whether you like Five Nights at Freddy's or not, that's a very admirable st- admirable stance to take. Although I would argue that actually the amount of publicity it gets means that him not charging for the game won't mean anything because more people will be tempted to try Five Nights at Freddy's and therefore they'll buy the previous games that he made, which still cost money. But that's not the point. It was a fairly nice thing to do. Although somehow the game has got a very positive rating. Which I can only assume comes from the fact that only people who like Five Nights at Freddy's were playing it. Because if it was as crap as he's saying it was and he made it, that kind of indicates that it wasn't very good. So to be then like 87%. Anyway. Well, it's whatever. It's it's a good move that he's giving it away for free. He obviously wanted to make more money and he released it and it was a bag of shit and bought it down and then re-released it for free and, and whatever. That's great, but... I still don't give a shit about Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna ever. It's just it's it's a stupid jump scare game, ain't it? Like yeah, click, that's all it is. Point and click adventure. Apparently, jump it's scare got quite a lot of shit. lore and shit behind it, but uh, lore. It's some dude working in like a burger place, and the animatronic animals come alive and eat people or some shit. I, I mean, what 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 more lore do you need? Who cares? Who who really cares? Speaking Actually, of who talking cares? about horror games, no. um, Layers of Fear came out um, this oh yeah week. Now, that is a much better premise than fucking Five Nights at Gangster Freddy's or whatever the hell the bloody <laughs> game is. So check that out if you like horror games. Five Nights at Fanny's. It's a game about prostitution. Anyway. Uh, yeah, but Americans think of Fanny's an arse, don't they? Same thing. Same game. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. So this is, the, this is the last thing we've got today, which is uh, there's now a $10 million Dying Light edition. For sale. Oh, no. Did, did they do this before? <laughs> oh, no. This was for... Uh, that was for Dead Island. This is a different game. Oh, it's just... It's still, the same it's zombie, still zombie shit. survival shit, yeah. So, uh, there is oh, a $10 hell. million dollar Dying Light Spotlight Edition. The Spotlight Edition gets you four copies of Dying Light, the following Enhanced Edition, <laughs> which comes to $240. You can do the voice work for protagonist Kyle Crane in a special Dying Light Edition. And okay. claim a zombie special effects makeup session whenever you feel like. There's also an off-road driving course for that following dirt buggy experience, but these are all trinkets, really. The big money gets spent on the Dying Light movie, which if you buy it, you will be funding yourself with $10 million, apparently, which is a thing that exists, <laughs> apparently. A worrying indictment of its potential quality, the Spotlight Edition buys you a supporting role with lines and an action scene. Assuming oh, you're not a trained actor already with that sort of cash kicking around, Roger Craig Smith will give... I don't know who that is. Will give you acting lessons to accompany your stunt training or you can delegate I mean, to a stunt if double. If it's Patrick Stewart... Stewart. <laughs> Isn't Patrick Stewart dead? No. No, no who am I thinking of? Uh, no, who am I thinking of? Um, uh, Patrick Swayze is who I'm thinking of. <laughs> Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Not the same person. Not the same person. Or or like 
Oh God, Brian Blessed or something. <laughs> then then people who fucking pay for it, but just some guy. Brian it may so well be, it may so well be like get fucking um, <laughs> get get Ian Beale from EastEnders to teach you how to act. <laughs> Oh god! How did I get Patrick <laughs> still in East Enders? Swayze confused. They're not... He's still in East Enders. <laughs> I don't know. There's also there's also a press tour, VIP opening night tickets, and a signed copy of the script. So, <laughs> I, I mean, it's just terrible. It's it's really shit. If you buy it, you're an idiot. I mean, no, no. Let me let me retract that. If you give me ten million dollars, I'll write a film. And you can star in that instead. How about that? How about that? You don't even have to pay, play the game or any of that. I won't even make you learn how to act. You can just do whatever you like. What film are you writing then? What's, what, what's your film? Well, I mean, I've only got $10 set aside for it. So the other nine, <laughs> nine million and whatever that's left over. Nine um, million? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten, give me $10 million. I'll write a film and you can star in it. But I've only got $10 in terms of budget. So the rest of your money is going to go on, I guess, cocaine, really. Oh, this is just, I mean, it's another stupid marketing stunt, but it's its kind of worse than the others because the Dying yeah, Light edition well. was like a zombie bunker. Not Dying Light, the, uh, what is it? A Dead Island, same fucking game. Yeah, um, I remember a Dead big, Island like, container edition. thing you got, like a massive yeah, container thing. Yeah, like some zombie shit. fort or some idiot bollocks like that. This, in a way, is worse because they honestly they, they think that there's going to be a film that's worth watching coming out of this. <laughs> and you get to voice lines in another edition of the game. And uh, unless you're actually an actor, I mean, if you're an actor, you're not going to spend $10 million on on a game and a shit film that you are then going to star in, are you? That's That would be idiotic. Which means only people who happen to have $10 million lying around and fewer than three brain cells are going to fund this, which means that the lines they read are going to be like this. And, and, look out. And it's going to be shit. <laughs> look out. So... Uh, you know what I'd like to see somebody oh god I'd like to see see somebody actually um, pay for this just so they have to make the film and I'll go and watch the film (laughs) but this is the thing the 10 million dollars is going to be the budget for the film that's that's the problem it's like it's 10 million dollars yeah that's what I'm saying they clearly have no idea they don't have a script that's what I'm saying give them the 10 million force them to make the film I demand to see it in five days. <laughs> Get on with it. What if it turned out to be a shit animated film just using the in-game engine and it was like 10 minutes long? <laughs> You'd be livid. You'd be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I mean, if you don't count the fact that you get to be in the film and have a personal trailer on set, the value of what personal they're offering... Personal trainer? Hang yeah. on, you get a personal trainer? No, a trailer. What, tra- there's, a, there's a personal trailer. <laughs> and uh, uh, oh, no, there are act- I mean, there are acting lessons as well and stuntman slash parkour training. So if you actually total this up, right, total this up, four copies of the game, $240. A makeup session, that, well, I mean, what's that? That's like $200. Fucking hell, what makeup you getting? Well, it's zombie, especially zombie makeup, so it's got to be, right, it's be oh, fairly oh, costly. Oh, oh, oh. So it takes $200. An off-road driving course, you can do one of them at Land Rover HQ for like 150 quid. So we'll say that's like, Eighty dollars. Yeah, around the test track car. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. We went on one when I was a kid. It was quality. I didn't drive the Land Rover though because I was only eight. The stuntman slash parkour training. That's. I mean, that's gonna be what, like a hundred dollars or something. Probably. It's not gonna be much. Is how you jump over a box. <laughs> Great. Personal trailer on set. It's just gonna be a shit camper van that they rent out. So that's gonna be like two hundred dollars. Professional acting <laughs> lessons. That might be more because that's an actual actor allegedly. Yeah, but what's his is, name? Though. I'm googling Roger this guy. Roger Craig Smith. Name? Roger Craig Smith. So I'll say five hundred dollars for that. I mean, we're talking. We're talking. I'd say. I'd say literally less than two thousand dollars of what you're paying goes to actual tangible things. <laughs> this guy is basically. He's just an American voice actor. He's not a real actor. He's just a voice actor. Um, <laughs> you're gonna you know, upset some people saying that with his face. <laughs> yeah, he's not fucking acting with his face, is he? It's <laughs> <laughs> not acting with his face. <laughs> Tweet that to him. Tweet that to him. Oh mate, you don't even act with your face. <laughs> I've got his Twitter. He's got twenty six thousand followers. He'll kill me. Um, <laughs> he, he is best known as the voice behind Chris Redfield in Resident Evil. Oh, and he's uh, no, he's um, is uh, is is the Assassin's Creed wanker as well. 
Oh, okay. Izio, 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 whatever Ezio. his name is. Easy. Ezio Balotelli. I don't know what his last name is. I can't remember. <laughs> Do you remember? Remember when Balotelli used to play for Man City and he was driving around with like 500 grand in the passenger seat of his Ferrari and he was giving people money. And they were like, this why have you got random in the morning? Over. And they were like, why have you got <laughs> so I said, why have you why have you got loads of cash cash on you? And he just goes, I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a hero that guy was. Oh god. <sighs> so yeah, basically about two thousand dollars of what you pay goes towards actual things and the rest of it will be funding the movie. It will be the only funding the movie gets and the movie will be shit because it will star you. The wanker who dropped ten million on a limited edition yeah, but- of Dying Light. The following, <laughs> so- <laughs> it could be, it could be the next Blair Witch project. <laughs> Didn't that cost like fifty quid to make and made millions? Yeah, but I no, there's no zombies in Blair Witch. That was pretty much the point, wasn't it? You never, you never saw anything in Blair Witch. It was all just like, oh my god, what's that over in the shadows that we can't see? Quick, move the camera. <laughs> oh, it's gone. That was like that was that was what Blair Witch was for like an hour and a half. This, I mean, they're talking about actual zombie makeup. So, the- Blair Witch, it's showed our age. Blair Witch Project is like 1999. We're like, yeah, Blair there Witch will be Project. People, there'll be people watching this who weren't even born when, who were like teenagers, who were, like, who were literally 16 years old, who weren't born when Blair Witch came out. <laughs> Thinking, what the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck is Blair Witch? I got Blair Witch. When I was 13, Blair Witch shit me up. (laughs) Shit me up. (laughs) Blair Witch was um uh it's actually a bit bit piss poor. It made it cost sixty thousand dollar to make. And (laughs) how much was was that just the camera? (laughs) How much did you spend on the camera? That was it. Oh well I say it did shit. I mean sixty thousand dollar investment of cash monies. And yeah. they made twenty nine million dollars in the US. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's not yeah. bad. No, that's not bad. If I could invest sixty sixty thousand and get twenty nine million back, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> or I could just say that because then, then I could invent invest ten million of it in dying like the <laughs> film. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, that is hot fix. That is such a shit idea. It's oh so my God. terrible. Ain't it? That I mean, at least at least the uh, the Dead Island one was only like ten thousand dollars. It wasn't anywhere near as ridiculous as that. I don't think. I'm just gonna have a quick look. Actually, Dead Island. Uh, so this guy I've slammed anyway. Who the edition. fuck is Roger Craig Smith? He's a he's Sonic the Hedgehog. He's Dying Light Captain Ammer. Ica. Captain America, <laughs> Captain America, that's it. Captain, <laughs> Captain Emma, <laughs> Ica. <laughs> Batman, he ain't Batman. Who is this guy? He ain't oh, Batman. He's God. Batman. I've just signed this guy and he's Batman. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, no, no, you're right. But... No, sorry. I, I take it back. I take it back. It was not Dead Island that had the fucking stupid zombie proof shelter. It was Dying Light. So they've done yeah, this twice. It was. it was Dying Light. I really thought, honestly, I thought there's no way they're I that fucking stupid to do it again. Because before it was 250 grand and you got a zombie-proof shelter or, and, or something. Yeah, a zombie-proof shelter and some shit. And your face in the game. And I, I, I honestly thought there's no way they're going to they're gonna try that same marketing stunt twice. They did. I take it back. You idiots! Stop it! No one's gonna buy this. Go away! <laughs> Don't do it ever again. And also, the picture of the zombie-proof shelter, which I've just got rid of, and I shouldn't have done because I could have showed it, seems to be made out of corrugated iron and cardboard boxes. And if you can't make that yourself, then you've clearly got something wrong with you. And it's not going to cost you two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So just you know, go down the scrappy, make your own, far cheaper. Anything to add, Robert Craig Smith? <laughs> Is that his name? <laughs> Is it Richard? Is it Robert? <laughs> I've forgotten it already. <laughs> I don't know what this guy is. I've, I've watched the video. Of Roger. Him. It's like, not even Robert. It's Roger. <laughs> I, he, I said Robert or Richard. <laughs> it's not even either of those. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, God. Um, 
Batman in Captain America's voice, but like in Lego games or something. It's not like the Arkham Knight Batman or whatever. Yeah, but you don't know that game's face. So. (laughs) (laughs) That is hard fix. I I quite like to be a voice actor. I bet it's an easy gig. Right. Tell me. Hire me. Get, get, come up with a job and hire me, and I'll I'll do the voice lines right now. The end of hot fix. Okay. Um, you are <laughs> you are a weary you are a, a weary traveller who has been roped in by the local militia to do the outro to an internet podcast about video <laughs> games. <laughs> what year are we talking? Uh, seventeen hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> right there, you laddie. <laughs> it's the end of the outfit. <laughs> See, I'm acting with my face, though. I've got a high of face. Right there, you laddie. <laughs> the end of the outfit. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Contact lens is coming out. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) We'll see you next week. (laughs) Bye.